had guys are trying to take you under their wing or try to save you or something like that because they know a little bit about your past? I'm unsavable. I'm a f***ing animal! I already aren't you aren't you jd complaining already we got the hair out today listen bro don't don't turn this to like an e-news stuff like fast current events move myself please all right welcome to complete animals episode seven this is a lucky episode even though jd is complaining already folks but that's no, i'm fine. not complaining my hair is out today you see you see the what i'm blessed with you see the white streak i'm not peppy laputo i'm not canceled not yet <laughs> He's, he's our own Pepe Le Pew, ladies. Watch out. He, he could be, if you're in a club and, he's, and you're in close quarters with this gentleman right here, stand back. Run, please. Do I look like Bill Cosby to you? Do okay. Like Kelly? Can you please stop talking about Dada? We're, we'll get to him later, but congratulations to Dada. You're out, baby, a.k.a. Bill Cosby. Let's go. Complete Animals, episode seven. Episode six, we talked to the, the ladies from Sex Drive 305. You can find that on YouTube.com slash DJ Wonder. Um, and please click on that and check check that one out because that was a very interesting episode. Um, I feel like you're watching Family Guys based on the accent, you know. Yeah, they definitely were uh, taking offense to everything JD was saying off the camera and I guess on the camera too. I mean, he he really wanted to jump in that convo, um, but he 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 was off the camera and then he said some stuff to him and they they uh, I don't think they liked you that much, JD. What do you think? I could care less, you know what I'm saying. But hey, Noel, you're really attractive, so. Let me treat you to dinner, a reasonable one. Sorry, I could tell you. <laughs> Noelle's the one that kept talking about her boyfriend the whole time, so I don't think that's She had a happen. boyfriend? Her? Yeah, man. Those girls have boyfriends? Oh, okay. At least Noelle does, I know for sure, but I don't know about uh, Madison Capadonna. Like, <laughs> if she still, I don't think she has her Instagram back either, folks, so please petition Instagram to get Little Cappy back on. Uh, <laughs> little Cappy. Little Cappy. Uh, I'm about to bust a cap in your ass. That would have been a better I mean, Instagram she, name. They have guns they sit at their house, and they were definitely upset at you, so I wouldn't... Uh, get nah, on their bad side, nah, JD. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. They're we have a, we have a beautiful guest coming through later today. I'm gonna need you to be on your best behavior, which oh, you I'm usually sure aren't. I'm best behavior with that. Okay. We'll see what happens. All right. Listen. Uh, I'm gonna do something a little different today because um, we have a, a special guest, but I want to get right into it because we have some stuff to talk about. I want to make sure everybody can comment on it. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, DJ What? And it's not like a it's not a who's on first joke. His his real DJ name is DJ What. What's up, baby? How you doing? What up? What's going on, man? All right, DJ What is here, and also returning is Dex Hobbs. What's up, Dex? What's going on, guys? Hey. Welcome myself back. <laughs> yeah, welcome back, uh, Dex. Did, Dex, did you catch any? Uh, did you catch any heat from last episode with Sex Drive Three Hundred Five or what? Uh, I didn't really catch any heat. I don't think so. Um, it's been real chill, man. You know, I came here, I stood my ground, and uh, that's it, man. All right. Well, uh, we'll talk to Dex in a second. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Everybody's got to do their little plugs and whatnot. But DJ what? And we're going to... Oh, goodness. Oh, my bad. He's, he's not ready, man. He's trying, to, he's trying to get in the zone, folks. Uh, DJ what? Like we're going to talk to you, like, seriously and get to know you and everything. But right now, I want to go over a couple things, and you guys can chime in whenever you want. JD's looking at himself in his phone. He really doesn't care to be here right now, and that's fine. I'm here for you, people, the ones listening and watching right now. YouTube.com slash DJ Wonder. And on any... Uh, podcast provider you just type in complete animals and you will find us um so the ladies from sex drive 305 they came by and they gave us some gifts you remember that dex yes they came and uh gave me <laughs> a um condom. a whole shopping mall did they give y'all flashlights <laughs> uh, look, look, bj blast uh sex candy uh oral candy <laughs> and they gave me a flashlight that was modeled after the vagina of veronica rodriguez yeah guess uh, what man, uh dms are wild about that guess one. who forgot to bring their flashlight home myself jd yeah it's a wrap so but, listen but ladies listen. and gentlemen i like to pre it, it's it's dj what's birthday <laughs> and i want to give i want to give him a present right here your own That's Veronica my... Rodriguez fleshlight, DJ <laughs> What? I know you can use this. Hey, that was supposed to be for my boss. Here you go, man. Awesome. Here you go. That's so, yours. You left it here. It's gone, this, uh, JD. Here, is this like pressure. a coffee mug for it? That, you, that's the holder for it, so people holder? don't think you're a weirdo when they walk in your I house. I was thinking about walking around with that but, and drinking but, coffee but, out of it. You can see my drunk um, ass walk up in the club with yeah, this shit. It, just it, through like, Midtown. I'm like, I'm not going to cheat on my girl. Come on, let me go in my corner do my thing. Yeah, no, that shit's too much. See, my ex, I don't need you, bitch. Yeah, that's all I need. So that's uh, at Sex Drive three hundred five on Instagram. If you I guys want to check the them gift. out, they, thank you. Thank you guys for bringing that through. JD lost that, lost it, and uh, DJ What gained it, hey, <laughs> and I'm sure hey, he's gonna man. use it. No headache. Me and my flashlight. 
All right. Uh, I went. I see at night. I made it back to New York City, folks. I, I decided it was time to go back. I didn't, I didn't really want to. I'm not. Wasn't looking forward to it, but I did it. How was I it? Played a couple parties. Um, it was dirty as ever. Just just like I remember. Took the subway. Did all kinds of things. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't really uh, get homesick as much as I thought I would be by going back and seeing it. But there was like one time that I, I did get homesick. I, I was driving past Bowery. And there was a street blocked off and they were having like a skateboard exhibition or like a demo or whatever. And I was like, oh, man, this is why I moved to New York to see stuff like this. And then uh, I kept it moving. I didn't care. It's time, it time to go play. It's Don't time die. to go play. I played La Esquina. Uh, you've played there before, DJ What, right? Yeah, La Esquina's you, dope. You played there a lot. How is it now? I haven't been in a minute. I may go in August. I might, I might be in New Skeena's York in fire. August. Yeah. Do you still go through the kitchen downstairs? Or yeah, 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 yeah. You still it, do that? That's completely dope. booked out like, for, for tables. And then I had like two of my friends who were like bad were at the door and they weren't going to let them in because they weren't on the list, man. that's It's getting a little tight in New York City. Everybody's outside, so... Folks, if you gotta make yeah, sure, yeah, that's kind of why I want to stay away from it too a little bit. I feel like it's really intense this summer. I thought it would be able to cool down, but hell no. I'm not <laughs> trying I to do that real New York City disrespect at the door for no reason. Yeah, JD, I don't know what he would do with himself if he was turned away, but he wants to go to New nah, York. I, I, so I bad. I, I'd plan myself. I'd plan it well, then I get turned down. Um, Is it busy I, though. It's definitely busy. Like uh, Lower East Side is looking crazy, man. I also played at Pianos, which is down Lower East Side. And uh, it's like the college kids out there and I guess just like young people in general are on, in the streets. It looks like Tampa, Florida, like last uh, fall when I was out in Tampa. <laughs> That's because New York out. City does Yo, drugs. The Piano Burger is fire. They put on that English muffin. Oh, oh man. word! Yo, oh, they got food there. Piano, that's, wow, that's <laughs> yeah. a whole lot of. What, what kind of weirdo there. knows about the food at pianos? I tell you, yeah. this, this guy, guy right here, this guy, guy right foodie, here, man. <laughs> I yeah. do. I'm missing you're, out. Man. You're a real foodie. Well, I guess at, at that dive bar, is you're a real foodie. Uh, let's talk <laughs> about. I also, I also had my first like showcase since all this crap happened, and uh, had a bunch of rappers come out at Our Wicked Lady in Brooklyn. Um, the the two like guys that I guess headlined it were Bundles FVG and Marco Twenty Four K. Marco Twenty Four K is from Atlanta. It sounds a lot like Twenty Twenty One Savage. Uh, and then Bundles FVG, 21. just a wild boy. 21, Eventually, 21. he told me he's part of the Grape Street Crips and uh, out of Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, and I, I figured, bro, you were telling me you were white boy credibility Crips? right there, bro. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to like. I would never pull up chicks around these dudes, man. They're like, oh, this little light-skinned motherfucker. Get him. Oh, yeah. They definitely would have slapped you up a couple times, Jamie. Nah, I don't know about that. Nah. <laughs> I might have well would have lost my life that night fighting for my life. Yeah, because there's a lot of them, okay? <laughs> okay, man. Okay, okay man. Okay. I'm so, reloaded. Uh, so shout out to Bundles and uh, Marco 24K. Um, and they're also on Animal Status, which aired on Wednesday night. So you can check that out, djwonder.com. I'm back in NYC this weekend. Tonight, I'm at Blackbird Ordinary in Miami. So I'm doing a set from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. I get on a, fl I go straight from 5 a.m., go home, get my bag. 7 a.m., I have a flight going into New York City, and we're playing Grunch, which is our party that is back, baby. You don't know about Grunch. Grunch is the only <clears throat> grunge and all 90s alternative brunch party. Ooh. We started along with uh, me, Alana Rabin, and Big Vic. Rabin. And this, this is the one that we're doing right now. It's called Limp Brisket. It's a July Fourth barbecue banger at Project Parlor. <laughs> Damn, and you see, clever. you see the man, you see the man himself, Fred Durst. We're paying respects to Fred Durst. A lot of new, a lot of new metal will be played. A lot of Limp Biscuit album cuts. Uh, also, it's going to be uh, Red Daughter, Killer Cam, Matthias, and. Uh, you know, who else? Oh, K-Styles. So a lot of fun people will be hanging out Case in easy. Brooklyn. Uh, that is Saturday from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then I'm going over to Freehold, baby. New York Freehold. Do you know about that place, J.D.? New yes, York? Sir, that's family right there. That Shout is, out to Brad. Uh -huh. Fire. Jones. Dope. Yep. And then uh, the next, I'm playing Tailgate on Sunday, July 4th, uh, which is Freehold, I guess, owns that as well. So Sports Bar. That's what I'm doing in New York City. If you're around, come see me this weekend. Speaking of July 4th, are you guys excited to celebrate United States of America, everybody here? Always. Always, man. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm DJing, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited it's, about It's always that. so close to my birthday, so it's like, I just, it's like just a yeah, continuation. It's, July. it's my favorite month, by the way. I'm not even born in that month. Well, you know who's not excited about uh, 4th of July is Gwen Berry. You know who Gwen Berry is? She's an Olympic hammer thrower. 
And she's the first person at these Olympic trials to turn her back to the flag. Can <laughs> you see this girl? Man. Hey, listen, listen. Yeah, she did what? She, she's an act. She's she's called an athlete, activist athlete. That's like her thing. She's oh, like normal. that guy that that did the thing with the knee on the football. Yeah, like that guy in that, Colin Kaepernick. You know, and like Kaepernick. that guy that dribbles the ball. You know, LeBron Jamie's or something hey, like that. This is a is sensitive he really topic. an athlete this is activist? This is I feel sensitive. like he just says something every now and then, nah. and then takes some backlash and says but he's an actual else. king, right? He is. He's a, he's a king, and he actually he reads the first page of uh of several books for photo opportunities so you guys should check that out as well uh, yeah, he's an asshole bro. hey listen that was a sensitive topic it's a, yeah it's you sensitive. need to understand that all right these well, folks the, been through a lot over these hundred <laughs> years they deserve that well, and I, that's listen, it i'm gonna end it right there what you mean you people yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm one of them too motherfucker all right you people listen, you remember anger management but we want to uh I, I don't even you know what it's her right that's the whole point man that's why it's that's, that's right. why we have freedom so, you can do it but whatever uh, what Size of a party you are, or the big C, whatever the big R. I see they tend to take that personal. Don't. It's America. We should be all together. Uh-huh. And let's move on. From okay, that. we're not going to move on because that's fine that she can have her opinion. Exactly. But, but now we need to have an opinion. I want to know if you guys would smash this woman. <laughs> her name is Gwen Berry. Oh, and I want, oh, I want you to look. I want you to take a, look, take a look. There, there's one pick up. There. I can't. I can't see that far. You so need. Well, you can't. I'm just gonna say yeah. She can get it. Okay. Um, I'm just kidding. JD. I'm just JD's kidding. the closest. How are we looking? Looks like some straight know. drumsticks. So, <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, look, it depends. If I wake up in the morning, I'm rock hard. That could, that's the option, maybe. But I'm not gonna go hunt for that. That's the uh, this is the picture of her standing on the uh, podium, looking sad and mad. Dark. Um, the, and the, Dex I you, is like, there we go. Nah. There's the face. There's the face. How, how, we, ne- how, wait, we, wait, how wait, we doing? Right. No, no, nah, she's kind of mannish. Mm, no, nah, is that a dude? <laughs> Them lips are too. Uh, uh, okay, okay, no comments. All right, canceled. you know what? Now we're getting disrespectful, JD. I did not want that to happen at all. I wanted you guys to be very serious about that, so we're gonna keep it moving. We were hanging out, and I was in Sunday form. How was Sunday? Yeah. All right, that's oh, there's another thing I did. It came straight back. Came straight back from New York City and went straight out into uh, into Wynwood, Miami, and met my friend DJ What over here, who's celebrating his pre-birthday, and he was. Uh, he was pretty much gone by the time I saw him. What'd you say, DJ Warden? <laughs> I was all right. I wasn't too bad. I've been in. I've been worse on my birthdays. I've woken up in many bathrooms before on my birthday. <laughs> okay, man. Just on the floor. So yeah. Well, I made it home that uh, from Monday night. I made it home, so I was good. Listen, there's a lot of DJs out there that are lames. They have wives, you know, like losers. And they also have, like, girlfriends or something like that. And they don't hang out. They don't party. They don't rage. This is one of the last of the dying breed, this guy right here. I mean, this guy, too, sometimes. But this guy, for sure, you want to go party with him. Party with DJ what? Yeah, fun. And, uh, it ain't re- fun. DJ what? Either. Why is that your name? It's like, what did we do last night? What, what is it? Okay, that could be one of yeah, that could be yeah. part of it. We're gonna talk all about that. Uh, Many things. Dex. That's why. Hey, you know what? That's Many interesting. Things. Dex, Dex jumping the gun. Dex taking charge on our show. JD, isn't that's a little? It's a little crazy. Well, we, we, the man has his podcast too. You know, oh, that was a, that, oh, he beat me to that question too. Speaking of that, speaking of speaking of a podcast, he's Dex. Listen, monkey Dex, see, monkey uh, we got some things we got to talk about, man. Let's uh, talk about it. All right, cool. So it, you know, it started before, we, and I didn't think really anything of it. I'm like, you know what? It's just a simple misunderstanding. We start a podcast, JD, called Complete Animals on YouTube.com slash DJ Wonder. You can check us out. Um, and then Dex decides he wants to start That's a podcast. typical Here Dex for you. Okay. Here That's typical Dex. Then, but, but then, you know what? Place. That's fine. I asked him, well, have you done podcasts before? He says, yes, I believe him. I'm like, okay, cool. It's a coincidence. It's fine. I, I'm not the podcast king. I get, There's a million people doing that. That's fine. But then, uh, I, one night we're having a real like bonding conversation, talking about some stuff, and I'm like, "Yeah, man, I used to do a lot of interviews in New York with, uh, you know, on Times Square, just people wilding out. I want to do that down here in Wynwood. What's the next, the next, the next couple days? I see something on Dex Hobbs Instagram, him talking about wanting to do drunken interviews in Wynwood. Do you remember that, Dex? So I used to do these in Brooklyn. I used to walk up and down near C in Williamsburg with a camera. And we would interview people drunk, stumbling out of the bars. And actually, it was my friend Charlie Chill who reached out to me and said, my boy Charlie Chill reached out to me and said, hey, Dex, I would like to do drunken interviews outside in Wynwood with people stumbling out of bars. And he asked me to help him do it. And he said, I would love to do a segment and I will give it to you for your show. I said, well, if that's something you're going to orchestrate, which hasn't been orchestrated yet, I'd be willing to do it with you. All right. That's fine, too. Could be a coincidence, J.D., right? Could be. An, <laughs> Here we right? Go. <laughs> right? <laughs> true, yeah, true. I think yeah. so. Okay. W- what do I wake up to today, J.D.? What oh. do I wake up to today? <laughs> hey, what's up, y'all? Let's make this interesting. Let's do a transition in the mix challenge. 
comment any two songs from any genre. It does not matter. And I will mix them together, make the next reel, and tag you back. Let's go. Okay, let's, hey. go. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> That's weird. I've never heard anybody do that before. So this, this oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Dex. <laughs> DJ, what? Have you ever heard of anybody do that before on, on anything? No. Maybe, maybe you might have heard of a, a little segment called Stump Wonder, which is probably about five, oh. e five years deep. Five nah, years nah, deep nah. on you Shade look, 45. Oh, 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 you like a whole rapist there, bro. And Busta the Rhymes. So they pick two, they pick two artists, and I have to put them together. Oh. They're going for over five years, seven years probably. Okay, I can't give him too much of that before I get copywritten on that sucker. My favorite but, phrase was always like, fuck you, Wonder. Yeah, exactly. So, right. oh, you, you've heard of it. You heard of it, Dex Hobbs. Of it. Yes, I have. All right, so check this out, man. JD, that's uh, that's three things. Is that three strikes, or should I let this one go? What do you actually? Know well, just, it was just, only three strikes with your mustache, buddy. But wait, but wait. <laughs> Bro, Wait, hold on. You like you caught a it's rape not, suit. It's not three strikes because I 100% stole that idea from my buddy who referenced DJ Wonder. 100%. Uh, and it wasn't, uh, and it's not the same thing. Buddy. So that's not technically stealing it from Wonder. It's, no, no. My buddy it's called me. And he said, yeah, my boy called me and he said, hey, listen, you know, it'd be really cool. He said, hold on one second, Dex. Do you, hey, JD, do you notice that the more he's, the heat starts getting turned up on him, he gets more away from the microphone? Tell him to get his, tell him to get his mouth right in on that okay, sucker while so he explains this. Go my ahead. Part, my, my partner, Mark. No, you're not right. You got to move over a little bit. Okay, okay. Oh, there you go. Now talk into my that My partner, thing. Mark, called me, and he was like, yo, you know, it was really dope. He says, he was talking about parties he used to go to and things he would listen to on the radio back with Wonder back in the day. And he said, yo, I used to always watch Stump Wonder. That's what he said. And he said, and he would have two people call in or whatever, and he would try to mix their tracks. And I was like, that sounds like a great Instagram post. I'm not going to go and say stump decks. I just wrote two people. It's a totally different thing. Leave a comment, you get what I'm saying, of two songs, and I'll put together a mix that's a little bit more like planned and advanced, not live, you know, not the way he does it because he's a master of his craft. And you know what? You should be flattered by it because at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, you were a great DJ, and I said that was a great idea, well, and I did it. Were. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, it's great because it gives us more traction because I keep coming on Complete Animals, and the more people see me, the more people they see DJ Wonder presents Complete Animals with JD. So I feel no type of way about it, and I'm telling you that I got the idea <laughs> from you, okay? Because I am an upfront and honest person. You oh get what I'm saying? Oh my gosh. This, well, this is the problem I have. I think Vanilla Ice said the same thing when they were know, giving him shit about the police yeah. it's, not, it's not the police, it's David Bowie, David Bowie. Uh, under pressure. Uh, with Freddie Mercury, and it, it, he he went no, I went din 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 din, not din 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 din. It's not the same. Listen, Dex Hobbs is a din 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 that guy kind of guy. No, I'm not. He is. He's a din 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 and that kind of guy. No, I'm not. All right. So this is the problem I have with that is that I understand that, and I, I appreciate honestly, I appreciate you saying that that you you, you know this is, you at least knew about it, um, and you're not trying to deny it, but. You know me, dog. You're on the same show as me, like every week. It's not like this is like DJ Premier or this is somebody else that we'll never see or like you know what I mean. And like oh, I just took something from the dog. This is me. You could have you could have said something before you decided to make a little production on Instagram. How do you I feel mean, about that? It was, a, it was a it's a post. I mean, you were doing like in studio. You got people fucking calling in and shit. I'm like, oh yeah, guys, I'm gonna mix two songs together. You know, people always ask me because they always say to you, they're like, can you mix anything? I'm like, yeah, I'm an open format DJ. I play whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not one of you house DJs. They only know how to play. Oh. Same shit all the time. And I could play anything, so it's a showcase. Listen, I can fucking mix it. And you know what I mean? Is for one post, it's like yeah. But if I came out with a segment called Stump Decks, and it's like that's a little bit much, right? But for one post to be like, hey guys, you comment two songs, I'll mix them together for you. Oh. DJ One is the type of person who was like, you can't have that car because I bought that car first in yellow. <laughs> yeah. You cannot buy the same car as me in white, okay? Because, because you knew no. I had that car. You because knew I had these sneakers. I, because yeah, you know why? why? He, he is like sneakers? that. He is yeah. like that. Because you knew I had these pink Adidas. You dog, can't be wearing these Adidas. Chill for a second. This is what I do is because I pick the most off the wall stuff to wear, to do, to say anything because I don't want to be like anybody else. So I don't understand anybody else that would want to be like me, honestly, because I'm trying to be the most weird it's a Scorpio thing. Person. Him and I you know can relate saying? to that. You That's one beautiful thing, beautiful thing in America. Like, you know, you like, for example, you could have a McDonald's here and a fucking Burger King right there and it's still operate. You know what I mean? It's like, bitch, let me have my burger joint. You have your little Chinese joint here okay. or Egyptian food, you know? But you can also have a McDonald's and a McDowell's and right? Dex Hobbs is McDowell's yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh. It's like, stop fucking copying. I'm McDowell's? You got the golden arcs. I'm McDowell's? 
<laughs> yeah, Wonder, you got a sesame seed bun. Yo, 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 yo. Who Dex, is he? Which, which character? No which, which, which character is he? This is motherfucker just call me McDonald's. <laughs> he's not. He's not Prince Akeem. Was the little fucker with the broomsticks? <laughs> semi. Yeah. yeah. He's not semi. No, he's he's more like the uh, the heir to the soul the soul girl, Eric LaSalle's character. That's Dex, right? Oh, the, one, the, the one with the got Jerry you, curls. The you, fuck boy. The one with the Jerry ha, curls. Ha, ha. Real fucking funny. Yeah, the guys. one with the Jerry curls. That's who you are. Yeah. yeah. All, right. all right. So listen, I'm just joking around with, with Dex, but it's all good. Um, but but just for uh, just for one more opinion, a person that doesn't even have anything to do with this, DJ, what? How do you feel? Final final word on this. What's your final word on this? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, wow. I don't know. Damn. Womp womp. Okay. I don't know. Well, sorry. Let him do his thing. Okay. Doing it. It's That's... Yeah. Like and listen. Said, this is America. Everybody can do their thing. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Dex, do you have any plugs or any, uh, any gigs that you want to talk about this week? Oh, yeah. No. Tonight. Okay. This is ridiculous, but... <laughs> you know what's funny about this? This is going to sound crazy, but tonight I'm actually playing at the Sylvester... And Sunday, which is hilarious. That was depressing. Because <laughs> who played their first? Who played their first decks? <laughs> we both played you, DJs in Winwood. <laughs> no, that you came to see two times yes. and talked to the management. Who played their re- first? He did. DJ Wonder played their first. He played their first. They met me. They went and checked my set off out. And they brought no, 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 no. This is my question. How do you get those gigs? Do you harass them? Do you like, you need to book me. You need to book me. You sell them, right? Not really. I mean, people come across my Instagram. And they see, like, you know, mixes and whatnot. Right. It's word of mouth. You know? And then, you know, they, I'm, they, they, I'm in the neighborhood, dude. I'm in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm at local establishment. Okay, so anyway, tonight I'm playing Sylvester from 10 to 3. And tomorrow night I'll be at Freehold. Um, and I'll be back at the Sylvester again. <laughs> Hold on, he's in Freehold in Miami. I'll be playing Freehold. Bro, I was playing Freehold. I'll be playing Freehold in New York City. This is it, it's a Twilight. Yo, right, we're in a hey, we're in a hey, Black hey, Mirror hey, hey. episode. Listen, I, I listen got you guys belong together. Cookies and cream. You're, Bro, I'm you're playing Oreo, Freehold. He's vanilla. Max hit me up. He's like, "You want to play Saturday night?" I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." I'm playing Freehold Saturday, and I'm back at the Sylvester for the fourth. Okay, Freehold Saturday. You closing or you opening? Freehold? No, I'm in the middle. All right. Damn. I'm in the middle. I'm not closing. I just moved back. Or opening. I'm <laughs> actually, actually, I have the best slot. I always take the, the 7 to 11 30 slot because that's when the place is. right in the middle. Rock and because the, the, he's rocking and boating the quote, on, the quote unquote headliner at Freehold is really the closer. <laughs> and I don't want to be there at 3 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> I like it because it's packed when I play. And I get to walk around the party, and everyone's like, yo, you killed it, man. And then the girls come and talk to me he gets the while burn. the other guy's up there playing. No, 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 no. Energy. He, he gets the burn, the, the headliner, by playing all the songs that he knows the girls are like. That's what he really likes. Isn't that true, Dex? <laughs> what do I like to burn the headliner songs? Yeah. No, nah, I don't believe in that. First of all, I don't burn songs because I have a very See, this large never playlist. this DJing. No, I have a large playlist, and I can play whatever and just stay away from Because in Miami, the DJs play the same 200 songs. And there's thousands and thousands of songs, so I just play the other ones, and people have a great time. And actually, they're like, dude, it's, your set was great because I haven't heard this stuff, and it was awesome. And you know, all right. So if you want to go, if you want to hear Jason Derulo, you can go check out Dex well, well, Hobbs this weekend. Well, don't 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 do that. <laughs> I'm writing solo. Don't do that. I'm writing solo. Jason Derulo. Come on. You look Hell. like him. You look like a distressed no, no. version Uh-oh. of him. I saw him perform at 11 <laughs> with the redrum. You, you, you look like the, the Ruckus redrum. too. DJ, hey, yo, DJ Ruckus. Come I get your like half DJ brother, Ruckus. Bro. Come get do your half put, brother. I do not like DJ Ruckus. Hey, yo, Greg. Come get your half brother. Bro. Shout out Ruckus. <laughs> Shout out right. DJ Ruckus. Uh, any any other ATL. spots, Dex, that you uh, you're playing at, or do you want to shout out this week? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Oh, check out uh, my new mix that I just put out on DripNinjaClub.com. No sound left behind. It's <laughs> it's, it's called DJ Wonder's Greatest Hits. No. Basically, DJ Wonder's <laughs> Greatest <laughs> Hits. Trust me, like I bought the same corduroy jacket as bald. him. I rock it way better than him. He got mad. Trust me, it's all good. <laughs> Nah, he didn't rock it better than me. Listen, I, I'm confident you guys can do whatever you want. You can wear the same clothes as me, JD. Dex, you can live my life. You know what I mean? Single white female style movie. That You should check that movie out. That's that's okay. I know that I'm going to be confident doing what I do. And I'm sure... He said live my life. You're confident doing what you do as well. Absolutely. All right. So now it's time for our favorite segment where we ask JD what he did this weekend. I, we're all holding our breath, just waiting for these amazing stories. Go ahead, JD. Damn, what I do? I probably set up with my favorite spot, Freehold. <sighs> Saturday was interesting. I'll make it very brief. So this girl invited me out. Oh no, she invited me out. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I hit her up. Yo, what you doing? She's like, I'm out. <laughs> no, it gets better. And she she goes, Yeah, I'm out too. I'm with my boy. He's DJing. I'm like, mm, that's already a red flag. 
he's DJing. I'm like, oh, you by yourself? Yeah, I'm by myself. I pull up, you see Buddy DJing, <laughs> doing this thing. And then she's standing right next to him. I'm like, oh, let me guess. She's, he's definitely, she's definitely supposed to be his date. I'm like, oh, this is awkward, right? <laughs> and then um, I say hi to him. <laughs> Stop, it gets better. Because I probably happened to you, right? So I'm like, yo, JD, what are we doing, man? JD, don't get discouraged. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing it. Keep going, man. Great. Getting to the point of this, you guys are DJs. I don't know if this happened to you. You t- you ask a girl to tag along with you. You probably scoop her up. She's chilling in the, st- in the booth with you. You get her food. You probably got the food cupped anyways. Get her drinks, right? And then this dude pulls up, and then he leaves with her. How do you feel about that? Oh, my gosh. I-, I told her off. I was like, yo, that was a little uh, foul. No, that has not happened to me. Okay, good, good. That is not That happened. was foul. <laughs> And then it's like, great, bro. Now I look like a fucking target now. And it's not, it has nothing to do with me. So uh, that's what happened. Yo, that'd be the last time I ever uh, invite that person out. I'll tell you, and tell yeah, you that yeah. much. Unless I have no, like, if it's one of my yeah, friends. It's so, one of my friends. It's all good. Whatever you do, what so, you got to do. So we leave. We go to It was whack. And then a fight erupted out of all places. I saw that on Instagram. That looked very, yeah, very entertaining. It was like, out of all places, that place, it was a bunch of scammers fighting over strippers it took out. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you see a little chubby Mr. Piggy looking dude. He jumps when, when everybody, you know, the last guy tried to take the blow and everybody's on the floor. The soft guy, yeah. And um, I went back home with her shadow period, yeah. How do you know they didn't work in <laughs> IT? <laughs> Hold on, Dex. Oh Bring it back, rewind, JD. Yeah. What did you just say? I went back home with her and then she had, it was a time of the month for her. Yeah. So did she you, goes, oh, you know, you can come low. back on Tuesday. Did you guys watch Steel Magnolias or something? What nah, did you do I, I, I stare her at her a little. Did you watch Knocked Up? She had a little weird mutt. I mean, no offense, it's a cute mutt. It's just, you know, can those... you stop talking about her kid like that, Jade? <laughs> and the dog kept judging the fuck out of me, bro. This is how much loyal that mutt is to that woman. He said the kid. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, man, I called my Uber and I knocked out of my Uber. That was a great weekend. JD did pull up with two like model esque women uh, at Koyo on Sunday night. So congratulations to you on that, JD. I That's understand. That's to me. I don't. Fuck, I don't trust dudes, yeah. man. You know that. You do not hang out with guys. No, and you, I'm you know, not mad at that. I mean, all you want for that. If you're friends with a woman, she looks out for you. She keeps it a buck with you. Dudes don't do that. Cheers to that. Congratulations. You did a great job on that storytelling tonight. How? I didn't get laid. Well, I got scammed. That's the best part. It's like a little twist ending. It's a choose your own adventure. Oh, and choose your own adventure. You know what happens to choose your own adventures? The walls start closing in on us because it's time to really get into this interview. Watch out. Here he goes. Oh, my gosh. Bong. Now we're in interview mode and we're going to interview the one and only DJ. What? Hey. What's up, DJ? What? How are you? What's good, man? All right. Tell the people if they've never seen you or heard of you before, where are you from? And just give us a little quick backstory on DJ. What? Go. Oh, my God, dude. I moved too much. Where were you born? Long Island, New York. Where did you uh, grow up? I grew up in Orlando. I moved to Orlando when I was six years old. All right. So, so this is, I, I don't care about it, the, rest, the rest of your story. Right. Let's talk about growing up in Orlando. It's one of my dreams was to, really? grow, up, was to grow up in Central Florida, specifically <laughs> oh Orlando. My. Because all I wanted to do, to all I wanted to do was be on all that. I wanted to be on My Brother and Me, like my friend Amanda Seals. I wanted to be on any Nickelodeon we went show. We to high school together. I, okay. I went, oh, My Brother and Me. Yeah. Oh, who wants to yeah. live someone else's life now? I want to be a little black boy with a little black brother. Right? Well, we're the same like middle school and high school with her. I remember like seeing her on that show. Is that right? My brother and me. That's the kids from Charlotte, right? Yes, you're right. Yes, Yes, it was a black show. But I also wanted to be on (laughs) Salute Your Shorts. There was one black person on that show. That show was the shit. Nickelodeon was the best. It was JD. I was actually on a show when I was like, I think sixth grade. I was on a pilot for a show. They were trying to do on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon came out. Oh, Nickelodeon. Hey, they, hey, JD. Um, this is important. I, you can interrupt Dex anytime you want, but I'm I'm hearing about Nickelodeon casting calls when when uh, when DJ What was a child. So hey, please Arnold. don't interrupt. Go ahead. Boogie, DJ boogie, boogie. Times. Okay, powers. Yeah, the show was. I I can't even remember how I got on it, but uh, it was like a pilot for a show called Morph Sports, and they took like three or four sports and put them together, and it was just like just craziness. It was it was really dope. I ended up we, we, my team won. It was like teams of three, and then uh, I won a stereo. Wow. So dope. So it's a, like today, I can imagine like when you go viral on TikTok or something, that's when you get popping like in your high school or like in your middle school. You're like, wow, man, you, you're you really killing it. I bet back then, if you were on a Nickelodeon show on national television, it must have been like an amazing feeling, right? Oh, it was great. But it was a pilot. So it wasn't on. Oh. It never got picked it up. It never got that's picked amazing. up. That's a great. So that's a, I, forgot. I thought it would have. It was a dope show. I thought it was like a just cool concept. It was like the end is like a big obstacle course thing. And like it was dope. Nice. So, and so you, you, you did, you went to high school with Amanda Seals, a.k.a. Amanda Diva? Yeah. Yeah. When I school, I didn't, like, I'm not front, like, I 
was best friends and knew her, but I like, yeah, always, always remember seeing her. Um, do you remember Digiwax? Yeah. CL from Digiwax or Eric Mendelssohn? Which one? Uh, neither one, just the website. Do you just remember yeah. how, like, that's how we got, like, yeah. MP3s? So, like, yes. I remember first seeing Amanda Diva on that. She had a track, Superwoman. Yeah. And I remember just hitting her up and, like, just showing love because I thought it was so dope. Because I didn't, I had no idea she even did that. I thought she just act, like, did acting. All right. So that was like really dope. I was like, give me a drop. Any other celebrities? Like, or any other the kid, any of the other kids on uh, Nickelodeon shows or Mickey Mouse Club in your school? No, Louis Fonzie went to my school though. He graduated with my brother. Oh, okay, that's and right. And he was in a boy. He was in a boy band with yeah. like with Joey Fatone too. That's right. He came. In high he, he came to one of my gigs because of you in New York City. His, his brother, his brother. John. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. So John, I've known too for like ever too since school. Nice. Uh, All right. So Orlando how, has some people, man. Eventually, you moved to New York City. Uh, how was that experience, and why did you move there? Well, I moved there after yeah, started DJing in Miami. Whatever, been here ten years. Um, I lived in LA also, came back, yeah. I was in New York for four years. All right, what, what would you tell to somebody who's like a kid now, either getting out of school or maybe just getting out of high school or whatever, um, looking to move to New York City? Is it worth it right now? What do you think? Right now? Yep. I don't know about right now. I don't know. Because I heard people say like everyone moved back there and they brought like five friends with them. It's like craziness. It's like busy as hell. I don't know. Do it's mean? it's a bitch to live there. Yeah, it's boy, expensive as fuck them. to live there. Like. Yeah. But if you're young, you're just out of school, yeah, I'll be like, go do it. You're going you're gonna to grow up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, that's the good thing about it. You know what I mean? Like, you're going you're gonna to see what you're made of kind of out there, so it's really dope. What if you're having a midlife crisis and uh, you, you don't really have a job? Is it a place and to go? you can afford hookers. I'm Definitely go there, too. You'll, still, you'll, 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 you'll have some stories. You do that either way. All right. And then you moved. <laughs> uh, you decided you, you came back to Florida for a little bit, and then you took the flight over to Los Angeles again. This was the second time you went to Los Angeles recently? <laughs> Third time. Third, Third time's a charm. Time. All right. Talk about that experience going to Los Angeles. What, the first time you went there, was it, was it like you uh, had always imagined, like Hollywood dreams, stepping off the, uh, the old airplane, seeing the palm trees and everything? A little bit at first. It was dope because I was staying with friends in Malibu, so oh, it wasn't, nice. wasn't bad. It was, pretty, it was pretty dope. Did you go to any like mansion parties or anything crazy like that? A couple, a couple like you know, it was like mad Persians out there. So you know, you, you meet a couple Persian <laughs> girls, it's on and popping. Like you're you're in like some mansion in the hills. That's such like, a flattering thing to say about a race. Like, yeah, did you go any mansions? Yeah, because it's just Persians. there's a lot there. Like, there's oh, just like <laughs> okay. everyone I met. You know, I was cool. basically Persian living there. It's the dark features. I'm everything. It depends where I live. So let, let's get into it, DJ. What can we talk about? What you were actually doing out there? Is that cool? Yeah. All is, right. Is that all right to talk about? Or? Let's go. Tell the people what you were doing. Why did you move out there? Uh, at a Good a friend of mine hit me up. We did a couple businesses with uh, cannabis and mushrooms out there. Oh, nice. Okay. So it's booming was, right now. Let's talk about that. So weed and stuff, or the flower, or whatever these weirdos want to call it, it it's pretty much legal in, in L.A., and, but you probably have to have a license to grow things. You can't just like just sell it anywhere or whatever, so that's fine. But the mushroom situation, what is the mushroom situation in, in L.A. right now? The mush. I just saw an actual, I saw a I saw a post today. Now I got now I'm drawing a blank, but I think they they're starting to pass along the uh, psychedelics now. You, there's a, they're like becoming legal now in California. All right. But we started doing it because I mean whatever we had like chocolates and actual mushrooms, but then microdoses was like the main focus for like actual like help with people. It helps with like PTSD, anxiety, um, helps with depression, gives you energy. You you focus like. Honestly, to me, man, it's like the best thing you can do. Huh? Yeah, it's like I'll be real. I've tried different uh, things. You know what I'm saying? Like you need stuff to help with your with your mental, and like I, I felt like nothing really worked. And these really, really helped me a lot. And I mean, like micro doses. Some people are like, dude, I got like a gram micro dose for 500 milligrams. I'm like, no, that's like you're trying to get fucked up, homie. Like, like you're partying. Then I was like, I'm doing like like the ones I had are like 125 milligrams, and you don't take them every day. You know, you maybe take like three days on, four days off. Or like vice versa, but uh, <laughs> oh they're they're gosh. amazing. And then we have another pill called Flow, which is like shrooms. <laughs> flow, yeah. <laughs> so I started doing like micro flows. I take like a micro and a flow, and it was just like a flow has like more has like um, flow lion's mane in it. There's like it's like a list <laughs> of like rider. really great things to, like to help with like connections in the brain and 
really good for you. So, so it's supposed to relax you kind of like kind of like antidepressant. Is it would you say that? Not relax. It just gets you like it gets you out of that funk. It's kind of it's almost like, you know, if you got to like you could be functional. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, Flow sounds like my friends, I try to get my friends sometimes and they kind of think I'm trying to get them fucked up. I'm like, dude, I can't take that and go to work. I'm like, dude, you're not going to bug out. Like, I'm not going to lie, man. You, I chill, wish I could do that. I just I had totally a can. If you have a to do list, you're gonna bang out no, like no, no, three no. of them. I had a bad because... experience with marijuana when I was 14. I'm still traumatized Ooh. from that, so I don't trust anything taking over my body. But I want to do it so bad. This girl's you got to do it in the woods. You got to take mushrooms. She has in a the shroom woods. addiction. She's like, oh, when I'm coming this weekend, I'm like, mm, fuck. Yeah, I gotta be honest. That's what it, you you do. You sound like you sound like an addict or like a a pusher. You're like I try to get my friends on nah, this. He's I, a professional. I try to get my friends on this one day off, one day on regimen <laughs> of a substance that needs to be in my body, so no. I feel, so I feel better. Even caffeine and coffee, if if you have to drink that every day, something is taking over your body. I don't. I'm not into that kind of a regimen kind of thing. Did did it eventually like was there days that you didn't have it and you felt like oh man I gotta I gotta get some. No. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, man. <laughs> no, that's what's like. That's what's dope about it. You know, that's what's saying like medical drugs, man made drugs, whatever. If it's like. Zoloft or some shit like that. It's like you got to do it, and you can't just get off those. You know, you you gotta like wean off those. You can't just cold turkey get off them. And uh, no, with the microdoses, it was cool because like I would do it. Then there's been times it was I might have gone like a week, week and a half, two weeks not doing it. Catch myself just maybe feeling really low, and then I take one and I just feel just a lot better. So it's not even like you get. It's not even like an addiction like that. All right. Well, it 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 was an illegal. pretty much business and so was there any crazy stories did you guys ever almost get robbed did they find out where you where you guys uh headquarters were and your, your headquarters or anything like that no the best thing about california was like you know you do that shit like how people just smoke cigarettes it's like nothing out there it's it's like totally fine we were just getting ahead of everyone like we like our like our product was out and then you know then you see all these other companies trying to like you know pick it up and do it too but <coughs> Mm-hmm. It was delivery services, you know what I'm saying? It was just like we, you know, it's like fine there. Florida did, is like in you, the Stone Age with it. Like, did, did you worry? You had to worry about the police if you had any of that stuff on you. And when you're driving around, you had to worry, right? A little bit, but New York is big on that. Not too, like right? Florida. L.A. was fine, but like if no, in Florida, the shit I was doing, yeah, I would have been like shitting myself. I would have got like life or some shit in Florida for the shit I, you know. So we don't have to talk about all that, but so basically, you can like in New York. I heard like you can like <clears throat> basically Uber eats shrooms to your place, right? Oh Chocolate yeah, shrooms. that sounds that, especially now. I think because well, at least with cannabis now, because now yeah, you can have like it, three ounces on you. Yeah, oh, that's legal. You can be in Central Park with like three ounces now. Yep, it's like crazy, and you can I don't even know have like six plants in your house or some shit. Like you can grow a lot, hmm. but times have changed now. Freedom boys. Freedom. But Valley was dope, man. Freedom boys. Until the weather's we, great. Until yeah. we uh, put this podcast out today. Yeah, you free, see, you free see this guy's, guy's face? You, take him away, boys. Take him <laughs> away. Dispensaries full like the Apple store. Come Can't on, freedom. freedom. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations on not going to jail, DJ What We appreciate, appreciate, appreciate yeah. you. Uh, where, where do you think the best girls are uh, from all of the cities that you've lived at? Oh my God, dude! So I live in L.A., New York, Miami, and don't forget Orlando. And Orlando, shit! I think Orlando. No, I'm fucking with you. Orlando got a bunch of Puerto Ricans and hot ass Brazilian chicks. I'm not gonna lie, but they're they cycles, do, man. Dude, I noticed there's, there's, there's a lot. Yeah, of, there's there's a, a lot of Puerto Ricans. I noticed. It's a big. It's a big. The, la- the last time I went to Old Town and they had like a car show oh, out yeah. at Old Town. Oh man, you would have loved it's it. A huge Puerto Rican community. I think Miami there. though, man. Every time I come back, I'm just like, yeah. It's like every time I was in that city, I was like, but New York's dope too, because. Y'all talked about this on one of your podcasts. There's a lot of fashionistas. There is a lot of girls with more style there, which I like. They're more straightforward. I like that. You know, yeah. They're like, they're they got like, style. They're, like, some are a little more real. I don't like, it's, you know. They're there's express not many shipping. ones that are real. Everyone's pretty fucking fake. But they're express shipping, yo, direct. I like Then the you come honesty. to Miami, and then, you know, it's like some, it's know. the most beautiful women in the world. The girls know? in New York, to me, are lame as fuck, you know. I think you're just Dexter. It doesn't work for you. The girls where? The ones in New York. The girls are lame. I think, Hold I, on. I think you're Hold Dexter. On. J- JD said. JD said. I think you're just Dexter, and it doesn't work for. How do you? How do you I, feel about I that? Love, Dexter? I love yeah. girls in NYC, this is man. Lame as fuck. You know. You know. You just go to other cities. People want. But have I mean, fun. after one night, I shit. meet them. The next day, we're straightforward. Yo, we're feeling each other. Was good. That's it. Carry on. I'm not trying to like. Some of them are more real in New York. Yeah, like they, you know. Dude, I they want to do something or whatever. It's like you know they do it. But there's gorgeous women. 
in all three, but I love Miami. But Miami, especially like the gorgeous so guests you guys have on today. I know. We listen. I, I we're gonna get to her very shortly. Thank you so much for your patience over there. I don't wanna, don't wanna spoil green it yet. Over there. Yeah, green. But I With got a couple. Lights, that's all I can see. I got a couple green. more <laughs> questions for for DJ. What? Um, he is a DJ, folks. What's some of the favorite places you've ever played DJ? What? Favorite places out here? Anywhere, anywhere. We're, this is worldwide, baby. Ooh, damn, anywhere. Yeah. Worldwide. I mean, some of my favorites has been like overseas. I would say a lot. Where have you been overseas? Frankfurt, Germany. Cocoon Club was cocoon. Like the illest shit ever. Um, now I can't think of it. This one club in uh, Hamburg, Germany, was really dope. Just people over there, man. They just really yeah. They so party. Called, they dance. It was called Bergheim, and he had to wear leather chaps yeah. to get in. <laughs> Yo, yo, why are you laughing like that, man? Why are you telling me? Suspect. Shit. Who's suspect? I said that in comedy. You suspect. You don't want on the podcast with sunglasses. But those on. places are dope. Like, people dance, and it's like, they really come to hear some shit. They want to hear yeah. the music, and it's like, those places are really, really fun. I mean, but I mean, there's nothing like Miami, though. People come from all over, so. All right, what's your number one line? Say you meet a girl, and she has a request or whatever, and she's cute or whatever. What's your number one line, or what do you say to somebody to get them to stay with you in the booth, or you want to talk to them later after you're finished? So that way they don't job? leave with a guy like exactly me. Exactly, like this guy oh. over here. Dude, it's hard though, because it's like if I'm working till like the end of the night, you gotta have see, a good one. You, got, you like, DJ till the end of the night. You DJ till the end of the night. I could have. I've food. so Stop many times grabbers. there's been girls so into me, and they'll hang out for at least an hour or two. But gotta I gotta go. be there till four no. or five. They're out. Now, this worse they, they're the making beginning. out with another dude at the bar. You're in the booth. Like, oh. you're, like, you're DJing. The girl's with you. Then you see her stumble out the booth, and then you're looking across the club, and some just... guy's talking to her, and he like drags her out, and your ass is still playing. <laughs> then you throw on Mario Winans. I don't want to know. Yeah. I start crying in the booth. That's what I do. I do that I do anyway. the move. I see her dancing with a dude, so I play something like really bad, so they <laughs> stop dancing. Oh. And then I'm like, oh, what up? Then I start playing. Then, then, then they start dancing again, and I, stop, I play something else. And, and then you play that's, Lately by Tyrese. That's I petty. Told you Sweet I lady. That's petty. Uh, JD, you're pulling a Dex Hobbs. I kind of did that joke already, but that's fine. Go ahead. Which one? I'm a big R&B guy, yeah. man. I'm a Scorpio. I'm one freaky first. motherfucker. Pulling a Dex like Hobbs. That. You're pulling a, you're pulling you're a Dexter. Gemini. What are you mm-hmm. looking to accomplish uh, DJing? Because you're, you're kind of like, we're, we're all trying to get back in this game. Things are opening up now. You've moved back to Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. What do you want to do, DJ? What? Just want to get back out, man, because when I was in L.A., I didn't even DJ at all, like hardly. Maybe a little bit in my room. Just but a hardcore drug dealer. Just a hardcore drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> What's fucked up? It wasn't hardcore. So man. L.A. is really not, fake, huh? That's not that. Did you say it? It was pandemic. <laughs> Nothing was open, my G. <laughs> Nothing was open. That's what, nah, like. it was L.A. It was like this house is booming, party. but it could have been more, but it was like nothing was open. Even restaurants, like small businesses were starting to sue the city. But Yo, So dude. I'm just getting back into it now. I just want to, like, I'm just trying to work and. It's honestly cool though. It's it's like I missed it, you know, and I need it. I think that long break. I need because it's like it can stress you out sometimes. So I was gonna ask you, uh, DJ, what give some advice to some upcoming DJs on how you like sell yourself to clubs, but maybe Dex Hobbs should just tell you how he sells himself. I'm about to, to ask every him. Club. I was gonna ask him. Dex, what should, what should DJ? I need what work do? right now, so I'm just gonna go roll yeah, with him. Go ahead. He what, like a salesman. What should he do? Uh, what you should do? Yeah. Um, you, what you have to do is you gotta find one club. That'll book you. Just one. Just one. And when you get booked, you make sure you have at least one friend come with you to that club and say, listen, get a fucking video when there's a bunch of people standing in front of me dancing. And if you can pull that off and you have a good mix online, you tell people, listen, I make the room move. And I got great music. Listen to it. And what they do is they hit you back. They They say, how much? See, that's where I fuck up. A lot of times I forget to record my sets. If I do have my friends come and they record, I'm like, yes. And and what happens is, and it it just keeps going. It keeps going. And then what happens is you have to continuously grab content of you doing your damn thing over and over and over again. And you keep getting the bookings. He just pulls the Denzel Washington American Gangster. I guarantee you. I guarantee it's a you. Name. It's a brand name. It's a right. brand name. Blue Magic. DJ, what? Um, 15 seconds, sell yourself to a club owner and promoter onto the camera right now. Go. 15 seconds, go. Whatever you're paying him right here. Dex Hobbs. I'll do 50 bucks cheaper. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Smartest pitch I've ever heard. Okay, now you have 10 seconds to sell your soul on camera. Go ahead. Sell my soul? Yeah. What the fuck do you mean? I don't want to sell my soul. That's some LA okay. shit right well, there. Well, I was going to tell you, you've already been out in the belly of the beast, aka uh, LA. But 
Do you have an OnlyFans, DJ What, or would you have one if, if you could easily make money on it? But you got to show a little ding ding. Would you Yo, do it? When I saw the money these women are making. The masturbation session. I'll Yo, do that off the shower. <laughs> Cardi B made like $9 million with the same six photos. That's and not and fair. she charges four ninety nine. That's not fair. This though. girl charges like twenty four ninety nine. She charges four ninety nine. I was like. I'm gonna start like ironing naked. You could, I feel like anyone can make money on OnlyFans. You know why? Because I feel like not at least a, a couple bucks. Because what happens is there's always gonna be someone curious to be like, like think about it. If you went and made an OnlyFans, right? The girls you know, I already have friends tell me if you made one, I would go check it out. They would. Someone's gonna look. Someone's gonna make an anonymous account and look like, yo, I've been waiting to see them titties for years. I'll make all the friends off the shower, yo. <laughs> Somebody will shower. pay the for yeah. us. <laughs> Straight up. You feel bad for the women? I've seen some women that like. Every day, it's like they get like ten percent cheaper. Like we got like twenty percent off to my next like whatever followers. There's like thirty percent off. They're forty percent. I, I saw one girl like she dropped her shit almost like seventy five percent. I was like, yo, you should just stop. Nah, Ooh, that's like a, Friday. No, 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 no. no. Like, I like that. That's a that's a that's a trick. It's that's, smart, but no, it's if you money. keep going lower and lower, I was like, oh, sweetie, I don't think anyone's going to your page. You got, hey, <laughs> like, no, you don't. Dip, you're just don't. you're just dropping, dude. That's like if you open up a, a store. And you said you named the store. <laughs> what was this from that? Uh, remember the Zohan? You named the store going out of business. Oh, no, you just so said everybody it's comes inside, you know, like right? The, and they buy everything, the but you're never guy, going out of business. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's smart. It's like, yo, I'm going to put it for a discount. But really, that's probably the number they want anyway. And people are like, oh, I'm getting a deal on this. got to get like, them no, in. No, stupid. Yeah, got to get them in there. No, dumbass. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of OnlyFans and everything, listen. Do you or your parents ever wish you chose a different career path, DJ What? I'm sure they might, but they've never said it to me. They just want me to be happy. My, my parents are the shit. They just want me to be happy. They're still kind of old school with it, though. Like, why do you have to do all this crazy? Because it's like, it is, you know, like an artist or anything else. It's like, sometimes it could be a struggle. And all right, so if when, I was like working yeah. some BS job that I hate, though, they'd be like, you're, you know, it's safe. They want you to always be safe. And I'm like, no. it's safe. <laughs> safe. Like, this is, this is, this is where you should be. Yeah. Don't the rock. Trust me. This is right. where you should be. Um, so, but. listen, that's fine. That, that I'm glad you're, you want to be happy, but when is it time to settle down? When is it time to uh, move on in life? Is there ever going to be a time? Are you going to be like me and just never step Peter, away Peter from Pan DJing? it the rest of your and life? Step away from DJing, you mean? Or just in general, stop living this crazy lifestyle that you're living, DJ. Will. Fuck no, you hang out with me. I love this fucking <laughs> life. Club life's one of the reasons I love life. That's right. All it's right, fucking man. fucking amazing. Exactly. Good answer. So what is your top goal 2021, DJ What Go? Just get back on my feet. I moved around a lot, so things are up in the air, but... Uh, just get on my feet and uh, not just like DJ. It was a time way back and I was like, just want to DJ or produce. And now it's like, I will do any and everything, man. There's like a lot of things I like. So I'm going to try to capitalize and make money with everything. All right. You heard it first. DJ what? Tell them where they can find you online. Online, Instagrams, at DJ what? SoundCloud, DJ what? MIA, MixCloud, DJ what? MIA, which I need to. I need Wonder to yell at me and tell me to make more mixes. I have a lot of friends too. I need to. I have those <laughs> platforms, but I need to record and post my shit. Yeah, I think that's how you should, you'd do good as a DJ. Just record some sets. You got to record my. I got to record my sets. Like so many times, I forget players. to hit record. Or I have some friends that literally scream at me. They're so mad, but. Yeah, but don't come up and talk to me when I'm recording the set. I hate that because I'm like, then well, I got to make it to sound do you good. Like, do you like recording them at home or do you like recording them at the club? No, live at the club. Live baby. at the club because like at home, I, it's, it's just hard for me to do and I need people there. Like, But I can come up with some. It's, it's dope at home though too. It's a just a different vibe because I'm really doing whatever I want. But if I need something cool just so you can hear what I do, just like, you know, it's like that business card now. So I need to record like, yeah, like out the club. Yeah. Like, all right. I have well, a lot of recording from La Esquina, which is, I love La Esquina because you can play a, a lot of dope shit there. Well, go check him out on his Instagram, those. DJ What. He really scored that name, DJ What, on Instagram. That's a great one. All right. So oh, I asked Buddy. This dude had it, and I asked him. He only had like two photos, and I hit him up. I was just like, is there any way you can just drop this name? He didn't say nothing back, and then I just, it was free one day. And wow. I was just like, yo. Because it was underscore MIA, he let it go, and I was just like, Can you yes. report somebody to get their account taken down and then grab their name afterwards? Yeah. I bet, not if you're a celeb, I, right? I did. I did. There's, yeah. a, there's a person that had my name, DJ Wonder, but it's tra I have it trademarked, so the person, 
usually Instagram. Well, he sued him. This is look. This is what happens. Instagram. Um, if they if a person has your name, they could be like, well, they're not they're not anything. Like that's just somebody that happens to have your name. Like say your name is like T J One or something. Say, oh, he's a gamer named T J One. Well, this person had D J Wonder, and they were also putting flyers up that said D J Wonder. And I have a trademark, and I can be like, well, look. They're uh, impersonating me, bang bang. So luckily, I got it. So I think I think that's the only way you can probably. Uh, What's do up, something like Adam? That. I'm an Adam tonight. All right, JD Pepe Le Pew, don't get us started. Listen, <laughs> uh, DJ, what I gotta, I'm I gotta. You. You, you've been you've been great. Thank you so much for hanging with us. But I gotta boost you. you out of that seat. Are you ready? I'm ready. Stay stay right there. Ready. Three, two, one. Hello. Look at that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, did you see that? Did you see what just happened? That's why you said don't move. That's that's right. We have we have our very, very, very special guest tonight. Her name is Jasmine Waltz. What's up, Jasmine? How are you doing tonight? Hello. I'm doing good. Chill. Great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sitting in a listening to us ramble for almost an hour, but now it's your turn. It's yes. your time to shine. Ain't nothing uh, I never heard before. Uh oh. Like, All right. <laughs> So, Jasmine, uh, you are, you are, I'm just reading a couple of things about you. You can correct me if any of this is wrong. You're yeah. an American, you're an American model, actress, and reality television personality. They say you're, you were born in Las Vegas, Nevada. Is that oh, correct? Savage. That's right. What is, that oh, what is that? What is on, what is on your hand? Life's a gamble. The car's been thrown out. we've been talking her. a lot about the horoscopes. I'm a Leo, and can't nobody fuck with Leos, because I'm sorry. You Leos be, are great. Everybody loves Leos. We're great. We get along with everybody. We're nice. We're like, you know, we're, we're loyal. There's, there's so many good attributes that we, that we have. No, I, I get that. I've had a lot of friends that are Geminis and oof, I have, tr you know, it's, it's a Ooh. battle, but Scorpios too. You know, you guys are like, oof, but I, you know, Leos are just easy to get along with. Okay. When's your birthday? August 8th? August 22nd. That's so why I got the 22. Wow. August 22nd. Deuce, I was born deuce. on a solar eclipse. So I was born at... Hey, don't hey, worry about that ice hey, over there. Hey, hey don't, don't don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about us getting a, a backstory from Jasmine Waltz over there, yeah, yeah, DJ. Yeah, no what? I'm just okay. gonna get. I'm just gonna get yourself. ice. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> what's, what's happening? It's cold blood. <laughs> it's a lady. Like, I mean, lady dragon is, over this here. This is animal. Right? What is it called? An, a, complete animals. Complete yeah, animal. I've been called a complete animal about well, well over you know more fingers and toes than we have. So. All right. I can smoke and drink here. Right? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. It's fine by me. Don't get me kicked out of the apartment. It's cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't do any of those shows that I can't smoke. I like your rings, yo. Thank All you, right. Baby. So, Las Vegas, Nevada, born there. Um, I was born there, yeah. Were you? Did, how was it growing up there? Because let me tell you how I feel when I get off the plane in Las Vegas. I have this overwhelming feeling of sin that just takes over me. Not not that I'm going to sin, but it's just this like dark, dark, dark feeling that comes over me. Did, did you 100%. ever? Did you ever feel like that growing up? I, I I was only there so I was eight years old, and then I moved to Miami. So right. I I wasn't really there for like the, you know, the adolescent years where you're learning and you're growing. It was just more like the the birthing place of of Jasmine Waltz. It wasn't it wasn't where I grew up and and you know got my personality from. Where <laughs> really. Miami did you grow up? I was right here in Brickell. I was really close to here. I was like a little bit of like Cold here. Gables. I actually just like D, just like DJ what I I went to college in Orlando. I, we have very similar places we went to like from here and then to LA, my back to Miami to LA, and then to New York and then I just moved back home to Miami about a year ago. You have which, a slight accent, like your Hispanic background or just French, American? Italian, German, Mexican. Oh, you speak French too? Just Mexican in there? I don't speak <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> my my just Spanish is so bad. Come on, I, know this. I speak every fucking language in the book. You know, it's funny. I, I did a show called Celebrity Big Brother in London and we did a panel around and it, you know, it was similar to how, you know, off the, off the cuff, like you just like, you, you ask a question and they went around the circle of us 13 and they said, if you had a superpower, what would it be? And everybody just said this generic bullshit, like, you know, I would fly, I'd be invisible, blah, 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 whatever. And I said, I would be fluent in every language. I said that. I probably told you that, fool. Like, come on. Yeah, you probably yeah, did. Yeah, probably, just like you. Because like, I steal oh, everything and by the way, from my, everybody else. I, I, have a, I have a new, a new show that I'm doing as well that um, I, I go outside of 11 and space and I interview drunk people and people on ecstasy. Very odd. Like, this is so weird. I don't know where this all came from. It's very, well, guess wow. what? very similar shit going but on. If you were to come up to me, I'll definitely confess. <laughs> Well, hopefully, maybe maybe we can all collaborate. <laughs> me, me, you, and Dex. I don't I'm know. playing. I'm you look playing, like you have a bomb ass British accent, though. Like, can I, you do a British accent? Look, well, you could either do like a posh accent. You could do mm -hmm. something like this is very like a Cockney accent, right? You know uh, what I'm saying? Like, they were saying like, bro, like, you know, like, I'm saying like, mm -hmm. a bit Amy Winehouse quite like. Quite yeah, like I'm that. sold. 
Or you could do like a quite like a posh one. Um, you know, I'm an actress, so I have to do many, many accents. If they all the do time. the next like, biopic. Yeah, for I got them accents Winehouse. down. I just did a movie with Jamie Foxx, and I and I all had right. to play. We're gonna, we're right gonna talk. There. We're gonna talk about that. Oh, yeah, I, wait, I am did, hold, hold hold that. chill, yeah, yeah. Dex Hobbs. I'm ch- very ch- ch- excited ch- ch- about this this movie that it, that is is coming out because just yeah. the, this the subject matter alone is very right. near and dear to my heart. All star. But let's bring it back. Do you mind if I read just a little bit of of your bio for IMDb? Of course, because you're listen. Jasmine Waltz's bio could be made into a movie. Correct. It's crazy. You just read this bio. Listen, think. I want. I want you to just think about some some scoring in the background as I read this. Jasmine Lynn Waltz was born in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, Lynn. and then an only child. I'm an only child as well, Jasmine. Okay, an only child. Mm. She sh- she survived her father's suicide and her mother's subsequent absence, only to face a future of an uncertainty. She lived in and out of group homes and shelters until events landed her into an all girls maximum security school women's at the young prison pr- okay women's prison <laughs> at age of 16 she after she was released two years later she began a quest to find a new and better life for herself jasmine what happened wow right wow <laughs> the way it's eyes wow fall. i mean i think i think it's 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 that was written by by uh, by an old manager who he you know, very, was like, you need to tell your story. And I was very, you know, I had a chip on my shoulder, like growing up like that, that was, it wasn't easy. So he was like, I think you need to tell your story. It will help you become relatable. And, you know, for for the people that see you out, you know, outlandish and kind of crazy and this and that, like, but you have a, you know, you have a heart and you have a story to tell. And so let me just say something. And so I was like, all right, fine, write, write what you can. And he knew a lot about my story. So he developed that story and I, I was okay with it. And it's it's beautiful because a lot of a lot of people a lot a lot a lot of fans that came back and, and related to a lot of things and to be relatable and go through trauma and go through bullshit it really helped me heal what I was going through I mean I had a really fucked up really brutal upbringing and didn't have a mom or dad brother sister none of that shit you know I, I literally raised myself so then after after jail you know you you kind of say okay what am I gonna do I came to Miami I'm obviously you know you're you're doing what you can to survive. And I'm working, you know, my first my first job here was at Crowbar in Miami. And I'm doing bottle service and, you know, probably selling some ecstasy in, in there and doing some bad things. <laughs> oh, you're OG, man. You're real Miami. Yeah, OG. oh yeah, for sure. And oh. and then and then I, I, I was doing I was doing modeling here and uh, this, you know, Ed who owned Unique Casting said, You're so fucking genius behind the camera. Like, not with photos, but like the minute a commercial casting will come. He was like, wow, like you just light up, something happens. And he was like, I'm gonna send you to this intensive class. And I went to it, he paid for it, God bless him. Like, And I think about three months later, I ended up booking a TV show in LA, moved to LA. Mm. I was there for 13 years and moved to New York, came here, did tons of movies, tons of TV shows, films. I went to, um, went to London three times to go to go work there. I did Celebrity Big Brother there, which is dope because nobody nobody in, in America knew I did it, but it was a very good paycheck. So and then I have a huge fan base in, in the UK, which is which is great. Hold on one second, Jasmine. Dex Hobbs is over looking at his phone over there. Can you tell him to sit back and wait, relax? Wait, I, I was I, actually gonna it, take it. I was gonna I was actually opening the camera because I was gonna get a little do Snip I look it. cute? Yes, of course. You do. Yeah, and of that, course. That, <laughs> listen, that brings me to my next question, Jasmine. You do. You look. You're a very beautiful woman. Thank you. But reading that bio, reading that bio, just makes me think, man, this girl would would walk all over me. She's definitely lived life. You had guys had had guys are trying to take you under their wing or try to save you or something like that because they know a little bit about your past. I'm unsavable. Like <laughs> yeah, I, you I told try. Me to, I, I'm a, I try to save people. I don't. That, that's just something within me. Like I don't. I don't need to be saved. If anything, just be on my level, and then we we connect better. But I, I I need to be the saving one. Like I, it's um, you know, that's the kind of my mission in life. Like I'm I'm a vessel to help heal other people. I'm an empath. I'm really sensitive to shit. Like you know, we just had the collapse of that building. It was fucking ten blocks down the street from my house. I'm on Citizen App. Like I, I can't stop thinking about that shit. I'm fucking paranoid. I'm like. I can't stop. And now they just I get alerts. It said two kids were just fine. Like I literally, my heart sinks for this shit like i i just want to help others like it's a weird situation i'll get into a relationship i think eventually but i don't i'm very like i read i read i read men too well to like were you married very early at a young age no i was engaged here um actually to the owner of gold rush which is now 11 he was my fiance and he had a son 
really fucking sad. I just looked him up and found out that he died three years ago. This, the Jeremy, like this kid that I raised, like we don't have any contact, me and the, the dad anymore, but like some crazy shit. Like it just, but that was me. I would work at Crowbar, leave. He, he bought me a Lamborghini. I would pull up to the club in my Lamborghini, drive here with like Missy Elliott. She lived down the street and like work. And the, he's like, just quit. Like, let me take care of you. And I was like, no, kept my apartment. Like I, I very, in, like fiercely independent. Fast life, yeah. Fiercely independent. I, I like my independence. I, I, I know better than most. I know how to take care of myself. I, know, I do want that some eventually to have someone like come and sweep me off my feet and take care of me. Of course, that's a dream. But like, I don't know. There's so what do you look for in a man? Honestly, personality wise, personality just wise, honestly, it's just okay if it's corny. Go ahead. Co- confidence is number fucking one, and humor. Like, make me laugh. Be confident. Be successful in your own right. And I don't want like a, a, you know, a mama's boy. I want somebody that's been through kind of some shit that I've been through because I can relate to that. A felon. <laughs> <laughs> a felon. What, okay. So, so if, you, if you've got tattoos on your neck and, you know, you've been in prison, no, what none he, of that bullshit. What if he shows you it doesn't matter. Side, he opens up with you. Are you going to run from him? No, absolutely not. That's I, what I, the problem with most men are. They're no. afraid to open up with women. They're like, oh, and then she just. No, dips. I break them. I break them open. Like it's very <laughs> yeah. easily because because scam. of my story. My my it's not a scam. My 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 story is I'm an open book, right? Okay. And my story, just like I didn't expect for you to read that shit when I came on here. I thought that would be the last thing that we would be. So I'm obviously an open book. Anybody that looks at my Instagram, it's on there. My 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 IMDb, and that's my bio. So. I'm an open book. Anybody I'm going on a date with, it's like, okay, I know who you are. I, I can't hide exactly. from that. I can't hide from it. So hopefully I can't I find someone that can't hide from it either. So speaking of open book, what's your thought on open relationship as you get older? Do you think it makes more sense? Is it more? Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with it too. I'm with as that. I get older, I just think <laughs> it's, the, it's just the best thing to go with. I think, I think honesty is the best thing. I don't want to be lied to. Exactly. I think if you can straight up be like, yo, I met this girl, like blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Honey, go ahead. As long as I have that love. And exactly. if I'm your number one and I'm your like, I'm your baby and I know I'm number one and we have a family and we whatever. I'm, but honey, go do what the fuck you want. Don't bring it home. Don't don't rub it in JD's my face. loving it. It's not don't that. disrespect me. I'm just looking me. back. It was proposed to me three years ago and I wish I could go back to that girl. I'm like, is it still available? Because like, I'm more at peace with it. I just right. think it's a, it lasts longer. It's kind of like keeping I, your shit private well, and not private. I'm a and bit of a just, hypocrite in this. Exactly. In the it's best 50, 50. way. But I don't think that I personally would want, if I have a, if I have a child and I'm in a family, I don't think personally that I'm going to want to fuck around. But of I course. don't think it's now, fair. Kids, to, I don't think it's fair to tell a man to not do it because it's in their nature. Whether, I don't give up. There might be one in a million of a man that says like, oh, I'm faithful to my wife. They said, but you're also going to judge me for all my past. You're also going to do this because you have these like right wing ways about yourself. And like, I, you're not open. So it, you can't take, you know, it's it's like a, it's a battle. It's a balance because. I just don't want to be with someone who's stressed them. I just like an. Just more open. Yeah. No, All I right. Agree. This isn't about you, JD. It's about Jasmine Waltz. Yeah, that's that's what about we're talking both about. Of us. We're on the same page. Listen, you just don't see the same way as us. But yeah, I, keep going. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, no, 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 I think no, I'm that, ju- that judgmental guy she was talking about, probably in my conservative <laughs> ways. Uh, listen, I was looking at your IMDb as well, just looking at some of your credits. The first credit I actually see is an amazing one, Bad Boys 2. That's how, right. how did you uh, get on that set? I was um, here in Miami and just booked that. That was an easy. Um, I had known Michael Bay like through friends and like so I got on that set they they ended up cutting my I had a, a couple lines in that it was in the video store uh, in that scene and they ended up giving it to like this this tranny gay guy which I'm totally fine with but I thought my line was actually funnier but I think they have enough hot girls in there that they were like we need to kind of diversify this this role a little bit so I, I got cut from that part but I still got the credit yeah you know, it, it, it spiraled my role, and, and it's okay. Like, it, it gave me that, like, confidence and that oomph to go to L.A. and have a couple credits under my belt, so. Did you have a SAG card at that time, or were you, like, working I your way towards I moved to it? L.A., and I, I was on a show there, so I, I got my SAG immediately there. So I, nice. didn't have to, I didn't have to fuck with extra work, thank God, because nice. I see these poor souls, like, sitting there <laughs> for 15 hours with, like, two graham crackers. I'm like, yikes, oh. that shit sucks. Late, a little bit later on, you were... I saw you were on a show 
that I, I've been trying to find illegal downloads of because I loved it so much and I want to rewatch <laughs> it again. Okay. A little show called Buzzin' by Cisco, okay. Cisco Adler yeah, yeah, yeah. and Shwayze. Did, did, you, did you know those guys? They're my best friends. Yeah, they were best friends of mine. Like, shout out Malibu. You were talking about that. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I actually just hit up Shwayze. He just had a birthday not too long ago and we, we talked a little bit. He, they're very, very good friends of mine and they know I'm like a personality and a character. So they immediately, they had this reality show. They were like, come on our show. Come on, let's go. Like, so we, you know, like uh, that happens often with me, like just how it happened today. They're like, people know, like I'm entertaining. I'm like, there's going to be shit coming out of my mouth that is different. I'm not normal. I get that. You said you're like, you're weird. You want to be as weird yeah. as you can be. Yeah, yeah, he's a very, was that introvert? Like you're very to yourself, neat freak. He's like Tony Shalhoub. And, um, I'm super OCD. I'm it's super, not, it's okay I'm be super OCD. introvert. But like, it takes, you know what it does? Just, I go out one night and I stay out. I stay out for probably, you know, I went to space on Sunday and then I had to stay home for two days to like reboot and re he regain would, my energy yeah that sounds about right I did. well Michael Beebe it was his birthday and okay. he, he's a good friend like you know I had to go with that I just like that shit I like to dance and close my eyes and that ketamine just hits right and he's like <laughs> oh my gosh yeah you're that wow. girl that sells dreams to guys getting your number, right? They, they won't hear from Jasmine. Babe, like, I don't even know my number at that later. point. I'm like, fuck cool you. Like, I'm we not, gotta hang I up. Go, I literally go so, to disconnect. I don't go to so, talk to people or hit up. That's probably why I don't have so a boyfriend. So Jasmine I and I met on the day of my birthday at Soho don't Beach remember. House. Exactly. She's like, don't remember. She's exactly. a disclaimer. And I knew it. I'm such a smart person to not take it personal. I'm like, she's not going to remember. We're just six chicks. I think we, yeah, we did. I did when numbers. you took off your glasses. I said, okay, I remember you know. your eyes. I did remember. It. Let me see those eyes again. Yeah, take them off, JD. Yeah, see, I do. I do remember you. I don't remember did you, you sleep with the glasses last night? on. <laughs> I do. I remember his eyes. I don't remember. I don't remember his. Uh, I don't. It remember doesn't matter. Glasses it was a good time. Hey, I didn't take a hey, person. Jasmine. What happened? I don't remember. Let's get back to uh to Shwayze. You see that guy next to you, Dex Hobbs? I think his life's goal would be Shwayze. If he could, if he was born just a few years earlier, he wouldn't he, want he, that. Shwayze, Shwayze didn't grow up right either. Like he had, he lived in his grandma's trailer growing know, up I in remember. Malibu. Like he's a cool cat though. That that cat's really talented. He's got a beautiful little baby boy. He's he's a cool cat. Like. I don't, you know, I haven't kicked it with them in years, but like when we see each other, obviously it's all love, but like, no, nah, I don't see, I don't see Dex as don't having, see Dex, Dex, Dex Hobbs. Hobbs. yeah, I know, I, when I first met Dex too, it was very under those circumstances, like we just, we, we sat in a club and we we're like, we hit it off, like bam, like we just became instant like friends like that, it's not, he is. He I gives don't that compare vibe, him, right? I don't compare him to like, and Ruckus I've known since I was like, probably, would, Ruckus had a little afro and begging his brother for like the beeper trying to like, to, to be part of it like he was a baby like uh, I think Dex would be not, a good member if No Doubt comes back with Gwen Stefani he'd I be a good so. background that, player see that, just that like, I feel just like, or, or you could be a new he member of so Black Eyed Peas he has so much charisma though weird, Dex bro. has so much charisma so and ideas see you know yeah, what it is about Dex like he when you he guys are the, falling short on something like an idea He's the facilitator. He will go out and he will fucking do it. But when you're too lazy or you're too shy to do it, he will oh, go shit. out and he she will do it. Oh, shit. She definitely backed you up. You see but why? He will see do why it. she be friends with women? I will go out there and do it. But so he will why do she be it. friends with women? Women hyped you up better. When but he just, will do it. And y'all, like, don't be mad at so him for not I call doing you, it. He'll do it. When I call your phone, I was like, yo, man, why don't you, you take answer. requests from people and mix music? Nah, I need a studio and this. All right, cool. Next day, boom. Instagram. Reels. Done. Oh, he gets shit on. done. It's, it's coming, get shit it's done. coming out on. now. It's coming out now, JD. You hear that? I told you that was the case. He needed I told a you boost of confidence. <laughs> but Dex, when I first met Dex, I thought, I thought Dex was a, he was a bigotry pornographer. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm a woman. I, he, gave, he gave me that vibe. He looked like he just like Yo, filmed for Bang Bros and shit. <laughs> You know what it is? Let him live his you know life. Y'all teasing him too much. No, no, no. People, people thought I was involved in the adult industry only because. See? See? Hey, you no, know, it wasn't. Hey. You know what it was? I used to, and I'll, I'll say it, like, I was a cameraman here in Miami. I had a lot of good feel, good uh, <laughs> looking female friends. And you know what it was? I feel like I had a little bit more edge than the other cameramen. I feel like the camera guys out here, they like to wear all black. They're real mousy in the yeah, club. Yeah, right. But me, I walked That's in there a with a floral shirt, <laughs> and my chest hair, and chest out. And I got my tattoo. Oh, there to go the glasses. Oh, you know the saying? glasses are gone. No, white boy. So anybody, You're yo, better without that, baby, That dude is honestly. up to no good, and that's not More the case. Authentic. I never thought about it. I've never done anything. You never caught a case? What'd you say? No, well, never. Oh. Dex, you lead us into our next question. You didn't even know it. That's how... That's how Great he is. You're right, Jasmine. He is great. Because he lead he led us right into the I next one. I didn't say one. he was great. Well, talking about Dex being a pornographer. I saw a, a credit called Cheerleader Massacre 
too. When I see something like that, sometimes I think there may be some nudity involved. I'm not Where sure. Where was number one? Exactly. You're thinking. I didn't hear you about cheerleader massacre one. That's were, my favorite were, thing were, in the world. Were, were you so on that one my, or no? This was this was my fa- <laughs> this was my first movie, mm-hmm. the first film that I actually starred in when I got to LA, and I played the role of Jenny. Baby, this was the funniest shit I ever did. And they're like doing cheerleader shit, and these girls are fucking killing it. And I'm like, yo, I went to prison, yo. Like this is not my. I didn't. I don't know how to be a fucking cheerleader. That's the last fucking thing I'm doing. But I I played the role. I did it right. I. They had so many editors come in and redo that, that you know when they have like a splash blood screen like Quentin Tarantino when he's like, splash blood, and you're like, what the fuck? Like that movie was so brutal, but you know, whatever. Like it, it gets your feet wet. The, I think the biggest thing with acting is it's not about even my talent. Like I went to one of the most prestigious schools there are in, in LA, and I, I, do, I do pride myself on being a, a, in, you know, a very talented and an experienced actress, but 90% of it is being on set enough times and knowing your mark, knowing what to do, knowing the timing, knowing where your lighting is, knowing it's all fucking technical. Everything about being an actress is technical. Once you have that shit down and and people know that you have that many credits, they're like, okay, I can trust you on set with, you know, you've already worked with A-list actors. I can trust you. And that's 90% of, of being in Hollywood is, is, is in, you know, booking roles is just that. Now, th- th- have people approached you to be nude and stuff like that? And how how do you? I've, I've had sex. I've had like you know sex scenes. Yeah. I mean, everyone thinks like here's the thing. We talked about OnlyFans. Yes, I'm on OnlyFans, and this is one of my biggest things that I like. I had a date recently, and the guy said to me like, "Tell me about this OnlyFans," and immediately I got defensive. I was like, "Fuck you! Don't ask me about my shit. Like, don't don't get into my personal life. Like, I got fucking really so defensive. Fans, Fuck you, man." <laughs> I got really defensive. I got got quite defensive. But what I said to him, and then he shut his mouth real quick, was, "Look, you could go online, and I could, you know, I'm in movies just as just as like some of the most A-list actresses in the world are, and I'm in a sex scene. You can see my titties online. You can see me, you know, simulated sex scenes, whatever that I've done in film." Why the fuck wouldn't I be on OnlyFans and make 50 G's or do whatever the fuck, or you know what I mean, make, making an extra 20 G's a month? Why wouldn't I do that just to show some titties to these fans that are obsessed with me? Why the fuck not to pay my bills in an economy like this when shit's like, really, why? Why wouldn't I do that? You're already going to go online and see that. Look at, look, look at Dex's face right now. What's why? the problem? Yo, 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 are you okay? Are you no, it's, 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 it's mind-boggling because every time you ask a different person it's about OnlyFans, the answer is so different. Yeah. It's like, why the fuck? They was like, well, why wouldn't I want to make the money? Yeah. Or, you know what? They tell me. I love the one that most girls say is like, I was already putting stuff on Instagram for free. I might as well right. do it for but money. But I'm already you know online. I mean? I'm already on. I mean, you could have Googled my name for like literally. It's just so for, many since different two, Since 2010. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to look you up Google. real quick. Were you quick, on Maxim Magazine too? Playboy? I never did any of that shit. No, I never did any nude photos. I never, like I, purely everything you're going to see that would, you know, would be all like acting. So I didn't have... And oh, by the way, I did have a sex. Oh, the, oops, Celebrity Big Brother. There it is. Wow. <laughs> oh, you, you, is that the first I, year? I, you, you jumped the gun. So, I was gonna, so I, was I did Celebrity Big Brother 2014. Yeah, that's and a then big thing in London, huh? It's a it's a huge show in London. So I did that in 2014, and then they did an all star cast, mm-hmm. which they've only asked. You know, they this show was on for like 15 years. I think it was like 20 something seasons. They only did one all star cast, and then the show ended. And I was on that show with like Ray J. You mentioned him earlier. Ray J. We had like Callum Best. We had Heidi and Spencer. We had. I was on the first one with Evander Holyfield. So this was like something that like for them to ask me to come back for their All Star cast after having probably over a hundred celebrities on there, and they asked me to come back. This asshole. I was like, okay. All right. Let's take let's take a look real quick from the oh first boy. the first season. Oh god. Hello, my name is Jasmine Waltz. <laughs> I am from Los Angeles, California. I'm a model actress, also known for stirring up a little bit of noise from time to time in Hollywood. I had 
in my past been called a homewrecker. Oh my goodness! Hold Which on, obs- <laughs> hold on. I'm Wait, back to the open relationship. <laughs> DJ Wonder, I must say, I like this. Would make an amazing PI because I just told shit him just about her coming on the show today, and how does he manage <laughs> to dig up all this shit so quick? I never even it's seen not this that before. Fucking hard, babe. It's called he Google knows Jasmine about Walk. her coming in, and he has a fucking full like bio and He's, everything. I'm, He's oh, on it. He's this is what the members of the media do. This is what the members of the media do. Well, but you know what? She's so bulletproof to this shit. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. JD, thank, thanks for your input on that. But we, <laughs> we, we really, we just paused it on a very controversial uh, yeah. article from which the, is which is the the vein of my existence. Okay. By the way. Well, do you want to clear anything up? This or? dab, this dabs my heart. This is like this is a dagger to my heart. So when this shit happened, I met I met David Arquette um, through Harry Morton. Rest in peace. He, oh, really, really good friend of mine. He owned, you know, Pink Taco. His, you know, their their family goes way, way back. Harry was a very, 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 like, very, very good friend of mine. He was good friends with David Arquette. David Arquette was going through a divorce, unbeknownst to anybody in the in the media, to the, anyone in, in public. Courtney had already been in a relationship with her co-star on Dirt, which I did two episodes of, weirdly enough. Um, and he said, David wants to meet you. I was working at a, a club in Hollywood at the time. And I said, all right, we'll invite him over. Like, bring him in. Like, I, he's like, he really wants to meet you. He's going through a hard time. Like, he literally was like, he wants, you know, like, I want to show him a good time. And who, and who better than you? I was like, bring him in. We became friends, brought him to a bunch of parties, had fun with him. Um, about two weeks go into this relationship, I had met his entire family. I mean, Patricia, his his mom, his dad. We were sitting there. I had coffee with his entire family. We talked about how Courtney, you know, they had been separated now for 15 months. Nobody in the press, nobody in, in the media, nobody out in the outside world knew about this. But me meeting his family, talking with his family about this, I knew they're separated. About four days later, I finally ended up having sex with him. Okay, and I felt okay with that in my heart because I didn't. I knew that she was in a relationship. I know he's brokenhearted. I'm not a homewrecker, and I would never in my life sleep with a married man. That's not my fucking style. I don't need to do it. I would never do that. I would. I don't even sleep with a guy when he says he has a girlfriend. Like fuck, I don't need. Why? So many other motherfuckers. I would never do that. I don't. That's nothing to me. Then why would I want to be with you? Like why? It makes no sense. Anyways, two days later he had an all-nighter and an all-night bender must have gone through some shit he went on howard stern and he aired my laundry and he said everything he said she was my bucket list i met her it's jasmine waltz blah 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 said my first and last fucking name on howard stern wow i woke up the next morning and i had a line of 50 paparazzi on my street on flores and fountain where i lived i had to move my management dropped me everyone said like that this was horrible 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 for me this broke my fucking heart till this day he ended up going to rehab two days later and like i we barely speak like if he even if i see him out i'm just like the fuck away like i'm not okay with this you fucked me up you fucked me up and what does it say homewrecker like and of course i'm gonna gas it up on this show to be like people call me a homewrecker and i feel okay with it which is fine like people make mistakes i don't have bad blood for him he was in a really dark bad place understandable but he fucked me up that was really fucked up for him to do that to say bucket list i fucked her but what bro like i fucking sat there and pulled you out of the gutter met your family how about why don't you talk about that you just said oh i met this hot chicken i fucked her to howard stern to try to like look cool you fucking destroyed my career like i quit hollywood i stopped i stopped you know i i got dropped by my agency and i was with the best agency there was and i would I didn't work for two years. I had to move across the street into a secured building. I wasn't make. I was. I was depressed. I was embarrassed. I couldn't go out. Like it was fucking. Oh, like you, everywhere I went, paparazzi taking pictures of me. I couldn't go out to the clubs. Couldn't go. Like it's a fucking nightmare, bro. It was not a good. That's not the way I wanted to present myself, and then try to be an actress on top of it. One of the reasons why I went on Celebrity Big Brother. I just said yeah. fuck it. I need. I need some paper. Like I'm gonna. I'm gonna take this check. I'm going to do it. I came back eventually. Hollywood, the beautiful thing about Hollywood is they forget. Mm-hmm. The next story comes, they forget. Mm-hmm. 
you know oh they do forget well, that's, they what forget. I was, that's what i was gonna ask you um and i guess you've already explained it like going being on a sh- like a reality show sometimes it's hard to gain credibility again uh especially in, like in the acting world because they say yeah. oh you've gone and done reality or you're just even doing tv you can't get back in films and stuff so right. how hard was it for you to to get cast again did you have to go to like open calls and everything no, else no no what it's funny because i think the second time i did celebrity brother I did. Uh, I, w- I got. I got uh, evicted on the thirteenth day, and I'm still in London. And two days later, I get a phone call, and they're like, "My agent called me, and she said you just booked a film with Jacques Claude Van Damme, and you're the lead of the film. Uh, they love the way you held the gun, like you fucking murdered it." Uh, Alan, he just like he was the director. He's like, "I saw you in, a, in an old film. Like you've been on my list of people that I want to work with. Like I saw like your heart, and they're like, you're like there's something I want to work with you.'" JCVD, we call him, you know, the, him and Dolph Lundgren, that's a bucket list. To do a fucking action film, yeah. it's called Black, Blackwater, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's on um, every, like, Netflix, every, anything you watch. And it's, you know, I worked for three months on that, with, you know, in Mobile, Alabama. Well, you know, was, how was that? Shooting guns and, and working in, a, in the SR-22 of, like, an actual submarine. And that shit was amazing. Like, mm-hmm. that's bucket list shit when I'm, like, I did all my own stuff. That's stunts. real bucket list. That's him, but yeah, working with John Colin Van Damme, oh, it yeah. sucks legend. like a lot of it legendary. And I'm like, and he, he, you know, he took a liking to me. I mean, his family was there. His son works he's on the film. He's a split dude, right? That's like the crazy. Yeah, he did the split in the car. Yeah, yeah. He, he's Hold a on. savage. Yeah. Dex, Dex, yeah. you're a martial artist, and yeah. that's what you know John Claude Van Damme yeah. for. Uh, no, no, no. That's the, the dopest thing boxing, he's ever done. Kickboxing, no, but. The split. Yeah, I mean, that, listen, no, the split on the cars in that commercial. That, the oh, the one fucking, with the Volvo? Whoa. Bro, that was kind of crazy. Soul fire. He legit put his legs in between two cars and they drove yeah. down the street. That's that comes from, that's from Bloodsport, guys. Yeah, Bloodsport. Bloodsport. Check that yeah, out. Yeah, Bloodsport yeah, yeah, is a classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, also check out Blackwater. How is yes. he? He's like, he's a very relaxed he, You know, John, he's cool. He was, arrogant? You know, not arrogant at all. He... I gotta be hey. honest. He wasn't the best actor. He needed like giant <laughs> cue cards, like huge cue cards with his with his lines on it. And then when I would look him in the eye, he would get all distracted. So I would uh. sometimes sometimes have to leave set, and he would have to read his lines with the director, and I'd have to be off. And then we would we would edit it. So, but it ended up okay. Like I I'm happy with the results of this. Like I'm I'm the lead of the movie. I fucking murdered it. You know, the the directors, the producers are so happy with me. I was only female on set for three months. I brought the fire. I was always a good energy, never late, always fucking on time, getting fucking shit-faced in the bars in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, how was Mobile? Like, a lot Bro, of country it was, accent? It was just fun because, it's like, I like that real-life motherfuckers. Like, I... I'm I'm a, I'm a Floridian at heart, you know. I'm just like a swamp donkey. Like I don't give a fuck. I'm just like I'm like a, a real donkey. I like to wear like I wear flip flops and a tank top. I don't give a fuck about the bougie. Yeah, I am a bit bougie sometimes, but I'm not. In my heart, you mix it. in my heart, I'm really just a fucking normal ass like hood rat. Like I don't know hey. how else to like put it. Like yes, Mobile, sir. Alabama. Like I just have this sort of like bring the hood rat. I think I think the best animals. way to put it is I'm a chameleon. I could be you know date Ryan Seacrest and like do you know go on, on trips Cannon. with the mayor and do this and like you know and be at Martha's Vineyard and be and was be that a gem that she just dropped? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm just saying. But like I could be I could be on point. I can be on point, or I can like. We're fall just gonna into, go right by that. It just doesn't matter though. It doesn't. It I'm doesn't the same matter. way. Like I like to. I like chameleon. my Sundays like that too. Oh yeah, JD's the same way. He he could date uh, Megan no, Fox, no, 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 you know, no, no, no. And, and then just go out. On, do, go do out to win. No, no, no. First of all, no, he's too good for Megan Fox because he doesn't like her thumb. That's what he said. Yeah, she got weird thumbs. Up. Yeah, <laughs> but she's beautiful. I met she's her. She's beautiful. I did yeah. meet her and she's we had petite. a weird thing and she was kind of mean. She was not very nice. Yeah, I've always heard that story. She's not. She's not the nicest. But I'm very friendly and I'm very nice to everybody. I I kind of praise myself on that like i want to be kind to everybody i was not like that growing up i was a chip on my show i was the biggest cunt you ever met i was Ooh, like don't that, fucking she talk to me i get fucked up when i'm drunk though i will literally give people my cash app and i'll be like i like i'll look the next day i'm like how do i spend a thousand dollars and it's like oh I, that uber driver that i'm like where's your family from you oh wanna, Riva. Wanna, i'm like do, I, you people like i Venmo? like your ring i give him my i really have a problem when i'm drunk just giving my, my life away code right there you could 
<laughs> Here, let me scan it. I'm not drunk enough. One more. Well, while you guys are doing that, I mean, I guess the money must be coming in because I hear about this new movie coming out that I'm very excited about. It's called All Star Weekend, and it features Jamie Foxx, Robert Downey Jr., and Benicio del Toro. Now, yeah. that sounds going, amazing. Going from going from being uh, an outcast in Hollywood to thinking you'll never work in Gerard again. Butler too. Don't, and Gerard don't, Butler, come on, bro. Like, so, come so, on. So working with these yeah. these type of actors, did you yeah. ever think you would be in a film like this? Of course. Okay, well, there's the confidence that of you course. need to make it that they that they. I'm a saw. fucking G, babe. Like, yeah. there's there's nothing I can't do. I mean, these these people, Jerry, we called him Jerry. Like, he's been friends of mine forever. They, I had friends of friends, and they were like, "Yo, can you do a, a Russian accent?" And this was the day after Halloween. You know how turnt we get in Halloween. I, I, like, you know, Ali's how, twin. Yo, Ali's in love we, with Halloween. We get lit in, in LA. It's a six day production. You're go, you're going out. You have nine different outfits. Like, it's it's crazy in LA how much, uh, like Halloween is a huge production. It was the day after Halloween. I'm laying on my couch. I'll never forget it. And I'm laying there, and I get a phone call, and I'd, I'd already. I had auditioned for the lead role, which they gave to Jessica Zor, who, sh shout out, she's from Milwaukee, where my mom's from, and I like that. She's a beautiful actress. She got the lead role. They called me, they're like, we really want you for something. Can you do a Russian accent? I said, yep. No, I can't. I said, yep, I can. And then I, they were like, can you be on set in 40 minutes? And I was like, in Calabasas? I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I, went, I literally got my show, it was hair and makeup's there, so I, like, I literally took a shower, wet hair, drove there, the whole way there, I'm Googling and playing on my phone Russian accents, and I fucking learned it, I got on set, and I fucking killed it so hard that Jamie was like, is she Russian? Like, we had two girls from Ukraine, and, I, and I'm supposed to be, and they were like, yeah, and then I made up a line, so we had four people get kicked off set that day for improving and trying to be funny. Everybody, so this is Jamie Foxx's directorial debut, by the way. So Jamie Foxx has never directed a movie in his life. This is his baby. And so he was kicking off people left and right, and we're shooting at his house, that scene. So for me to like off the cuff do a, an improv was ballsy. But I'm in the hot tub with, um, with Gerald Butler and I'm playing, I play a role where I'm, um, I, I steal the drugs and I steal the tickets. So I have a very, cat like a very, <laughs> very, very big part of the movie that it's a catalyst, like it's just like, the part that like makes or breaks it. And I said, um, I, I was like, oh, he's, he's in the house. I was like, oh, you like the warm water? It's good for the dick, yeah? And Jamie goes, so who the fuck said that? I was like, shit, I'm getting kicked off the set. And I was like, me, he's like, best line of the fucking movie, you fucking genius, you killed it, oh my God. I even saw him at One Oak like two months later and he threw ice at me in the club and I was like, who the fuck? And he was like, come here, come here. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, you fucking killed that, like you fucking made the That's movie. Just, yeah. He's like, you made it, he's like, that was the best line. He introduced me to the producers that day. He was like, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, and then he was like, he asked my boys, he was like, wait, she's not Russian? I was like, no, I'm not Russian. Like, he was like, whoa, whoa, I really thought she was. So. Apparently, my confidence in that, mm -hmm. it, I made, I did it, and that like that, I think that part of my life like really that accentuated like that it's just amazing. made it. Yeah, I yeah. was like, you could just chuck ice at the chicken in the club. Come here. That's what you yeah. got. That's Come what you got. Like that Scorpio. story yeah. index. Yeah. Yeah. Out of that whole story, that's what you got. Is you I can, couldn't believe it. Jamie Foxx can do anything he wants. Have you ever been to one of his legendary uh, parties? I've, I've heard I've, about a ton them. of them. Actually, what you know you what? The Jamie Foxx is electric at a party. I actually. Oh, he's so fire on the got, microphone. He don't. He don't stop on the microphone. Though. Was it yeah, Super Bowl? Doesn't. Super Bowl weekend. I got asked to go shoot and hang out at this party, um, and it was uh, Michael Bay did it. Yeah. Over at Star Island or something, yeah, yeah. and I yeah, went. And while everybody in Super Bowl was trying to go to the Maxim and all this other bullshit parties, I was at this house and Jamie Foxx was hosting, and I was standing right in front of him. And he was singing, and he was <laughs> singing and cracking jokes, running through the audience. And he yeah, is probably the best. the best party host I've ever oh, seen. Yeah, he, he is the best too, party man. host I've ever seen. He grabs he that age. mic and he becomes electric. Jamie Foxx is the best party yeah, host. Yeah, I have a video of it on my Instagram. It's the most amazing. And you know what? He's also like really like family guy. Like he. When he loves you and he has a soft spot for you, he will like, he wants, he's like, any movie I do, anything. He really wants to make you feel like a part of the family. He's a good, good dude. And he, like, I, I, I am shot out. Like, I was so scared I was going to be fired and thrown off that set and like booted, like, Whoa! and I was like, he was like, oh my God, that was the funniest line. I'm proud of you. Like, cause that, what is Jamie Foxx good at? Improv. Like, you remember back in the day, like, Wando and he played like he is the literally messiah of fucking his, comedy. He, he is. Here. No, his best improv is 
I am your conscience. And he no, ended Doug so Williams' career. No, so <laughs> R.I.P. Doug Williams. So for him to actually tell <laughs> me that I conscience. did an improv line that was like not scripted and that I was like, oh, you like the Roar Matre? It's good for the dick, yeah? He was like, genius. We needed that. Why didn't, he's like mad. Like, why didn't, somebody, why didn't somebody else write that shit? And then he's like, like he heard his moan. Oh. So we're going to be looking out for that, that particular line when the movie comes out. Did they give you a release date yet? Do you know? So unfortunately, it got pushed back so much because Jeremy Piven is is the lead role as well in that. He's and, in it too. And Jeremy Damn. Piven. So yeah, in one of my scenes, one of my scenes in it is with. So I have Jarrell Butler. I have uh, Robert Downey Jr. in a scene, and then I have this scene where Jeremy Piven. Um, he's he's in the scene with J- Jamie Foxx is also in the movie. They play. They try to play Le- Le- LeBron James, and uh, I forget the other actor that that. They try to pretend like they're the the basketball players to try to get into All Star Weekend. So it's a very funny script. It's great. Wait, it's a comedy. It's a huge, yeah, major comedy. Oh man, this sounds and so, amazing. No, it's amazing. So, so what happened was obviously Jeremy Piven got me tooed very heavy, and when Jamie is very like, you know, this is his baby. You know, this is his directorial debut. This is his fucking baby. He put he invested pretty much everything into this. When when. When Jeremy got that happened, he couldn't release it then. You know, nobody could release anything that got me to So they've been shelving it. I heard now I've, I've gotten a little win that it will be on, um, on Netflix soon, mm-hmm. but I don't have an exact date yet. So well, Jeremy Piven's doing a lot of stand-up stuff, and he's doing a lot more like podcast stuff. So he's mm-hmm. easing himself back into the industry. And I think it'll be fine. I Just, love Jeremy. You honestly, said, you said Hollywood, Hollywood forgives. They and forgive. And, you know, I worked with Jeremy. I worked, I worked, with, uh, I worked with him. Jeremy Piven quite a few times and he's never been a fu- like he it, like he he could have easily like uh, give a guy a break bro like come on like it, like I just hope that Jamie like just like just forget like you know forget forgive is there anything you're working at on currently that we should look out for oh so I just had a movie got released um probably about like a month ago it's called 616 Wilford Lane and that's a very it's like a it, it, we shot it in um, in Auburn, California. It was the last movie I shot, actually. Um, you can find that on um, on Amazon. I think Amazon Prime. Right. And, and the Hulu. title, the title, one more time. Uh, six six one six Wilford Lane. Right. So if they were to make yeah. remake a like screen movie, like I think you'd be a good character for a screen movie, actually. Thank you. With the Wayans Brothers in it, I'll be a good remake. Oh yeah, fun. Yeah, the Wayans Brothers them. were not in Scream. That's I love scream. the Wayans Brothers on my homies. Scream is my, my homies. favorite movie of all time. No, a scary no, movie. That was they, scary movie. Yeah. They used to live right next door to me, and my first apartment in Hollywood was at one five five Vine Street, and right next door to me was the Wayans Brothers. That was like their trap house. And then we had like, <laughs> hold on, say that again. Oh no, I'm not gonna say this wrong. No, 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 don't do that. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, hey. I'm not putting my brothers on the street. I like think that. I think JD would be great in a Django sequel. But um, <laughs> first of all, I'm black and I'm proud. Don't fuck with me with that. Me too. I'll be I'll be the mulatto. <laughs> Hashtag slave, me right? too. Mean, I'll be the yeah, house yeah, nigga. Yeah, you, huh? you know, <laughs> I'll be the house nigga, right? The one, the one, the one, the one in the in the house. Exactly. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I just thought of it. It's paranormal. Okay, paranormal. paranormal. Okay, That's the word. It. Sorry. Yeah. It's a paranormal thriller, right? So there's a lot of different layers to it, but the end has like a, a real good twist, which either <laughs> people in the cult, you know, that cult industry, they either love it or hate mm-hmm. it. But it, it's okay. It, it's good. And then I did another one that I shot in, um, it's called uh, House Red that we shot in um, in Tuscany. I play a lesbian in that, but I, I kill Ooh, it in that phenomenal one. Phenomenal role for you, yeah, yeah, Andre. Yeah. It's hot. So I have quite a few movies out there that you can watch, like right. full like lead that, you know, I'm in every scene. So it's, that, I've been doing some big things. Nice. So it, it let people know uh, what your social media is, too. And then maybe their your only fans as well. Can, you know, so it's, get, it's very increase easy. that 20,000 a month. Yeah, go ahead. yeah. It's very easy. It's Jasmine Waltz. Literally go to my Instagram. It's Jasmine Waltz. And there's that link to bio. Right. And then it's. Jasmine Waltz on Twitter, Jasmine Waltz IMDb, Jasmine Waltz OnlyFans. Well, Jasmine Waltz, we appreciate you coming, but I want you to chill for a second because we're going to talk about uh, Dad Dad, Bill Cosby getting, that's my TV father, getting released today. Um, but make sure you guys check her out hit and follow her on he Instagram. Yeah, the most annoying movie. The ghost movie, I think. Ghost Dad? I hate that Dude, ghost get dad. up and get out right now. The movie is amazing. <laughs> oh. I don't know what you're doing. The ghost Dad was <laughs> fire, bro. Ghost Yo, Dad was The ghost was disgust on his face just now was incredible. Baby, All right, so we're going to get into the story. 
of uh, Bill Cosby. Actually, two days ago, he was released from jail. Um, and yeah, and, and there was actually, he did a press conference on his in his driveway. His team went and picked him up. His lawyers were there. Um, a lot of the women are furious, as you can see in this article right here. I am furious reacting to Bill Cosby being, <laughs> being set free. But basically, he got free because of he had uh, testified and they promised it wouldn't be used against him later. They ended up using that testimony later. So it was almost like a mistrial um, and they let him go. Now, listen, I, Bill, like I said, uh, I should say Cliff Huxtable is my TV father. Maybe not Bill Cosby because I don't know him as an actual person. I've met him a few times and he was very nice to me. But how do you guys feel about him being released? So start with you, Jasmine. Oh, Lord. I think if if there wasn't the free Britney thing going on right now because God forbid a, a man, my father, rest in peace, sir, but telling me I can't procreate I can't live my life. I worked this hard to do what I, you know, to make the person that I am today and, and to be held captive, basically in a prison. She is, so it, it, because it's so like coinciding with each other, that's what really fucking, I think is pissing a lot of women off and pissing people in Hollywood off. It's like, how can you do Britney like that? But yet you're gonna let Bill Cosby off. Listen, Bill Cosby's old. I think he served his time. He's embarrassed as fuck. He's never going to, it's not like he's going to be out there doing movies or anything. His life is over. He's embarrassed. Like, let that old man live. I don't think he deserves to be in jail. Like, you know, that's a bad place to be. I've been there. Let him go die at home. You know, it's fine. But like to have that comparison of like Britney going to fuck what she's going through is, it's a bad timing thing. And, and I think that's what it is. It's just bad timing. It's, Free Britney, babe. Free Britney. Free Britney. Free Britney. Well, free bit. <laughs> all right. Well, we we heard from Britney Jasmine. Spears. JD, what do you? Like how do James you, Brown? How do you feel about uh, Daddy Cosby getting out? Honestly, I don't know the real facts about it. Really, to defend it, um, I'm fifty fifty about it. Like I agree with the whole age to him going, but you never know the real reality what's going on. People abusing the powers too. So yeah. So it's 50 50 about that. That's all right. So you don't have the facts. It's pretty much like everything I ask you. Dex Hobbs, how do you feel about this situation? <laughs> I think the situation's a little fishy and just, exactly. it just happened out of nowhere. Um, I mean, maybe they f know something that we don't, which we don't know the full story. Um, my personal opinion is um, I think it can go either way, um, in all fairness. I think that uh, if a woman says that she was uh, taken advantage of, you know. You shouldn't, you know, automatically just say that it's not she just wasn't. One woman. It's like fifteen women. It was That's 15? the problem. It's a lot of motherfucking exactly. women. Yeah, I it's guess. Not yeah, like it's like one yeah, yeah. woman. That's I feel, a lot I feel, of women. Like no, but you can't. That's not a lie. I see. At I don't. Point. I really don't. Like I said, I don't really know much about yeah. it. So I, that's a detail it's I a forgot. It's a lot of women, and it goes. It, it's deep rooted from like day one. That motherfucker that, was a slimy bastard putting pills in. Like he's he's obviously a, like a I, slime bag. Yeah, like like I said, I, I don't know the story. Okay. But he's old as fuck, and let him let him die at home. And fuck it. Okay, there's 15. I'm, you know, a what, lot. That's a lot. Um, and dude, I spit it out. What's the problem? No, because I, I just like I said, I don't know the details. But you know, they let him out. It seems a little fishy. Yeah. You know, funny. they say they if say. you want to get laid, you gotta I'd be funny as fuck and have a lot of paper. Panties, of panties drop for a, for a lot. Panties drop for people that are fucking funny. Okay. If you're a fucking clown and you keep people like to I laugh. In here, I said, I if you can make like a girl laugh hysterically, like confidence. You, oh. if you can make a girl laugh hysterically, you have way better chance. And he's a fucking comic. I, def exactly. I definitely wouldn't have fucked with Bill Cosby, but that's. Just me personally. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I okay. wouldn't have either. Just what a real coincidence. Yeah, good, good, good to know, Dex Hobbs. Um, all right. Well, is, the final thing I want to ask about this is: this the beginning of the end of the Me Too movement? How do you guys feel about that? I think it's a definitely a blow to the Me Too movement. Mm. It's I a, think it's I a think, gut punch. I think I think it's never going. That to means end. even Trump. We're not going to get Trump I'm either. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that the Me Too movement made men that are a little you know, aggressive on women, maybe lean back a bit and, and you know, assess their, their actions a little bit. You know, they don't, especially men of power that have money and that have power, but it just any man in general, just like don't abuse your privilege, don't abuse your, your fame or your, like, it's, it's just disgusting. Like grab on a booty and smack a booty in the club, that's one thing, but to take them back to your house and, 
you know, and use your, like, it, it, it's, it's sad because so many women, they're, they're, they don't, you, you can't, it just sucks. Like, just, it's a whole, what if, what lean if, back, bro. What if just some women lean set back. up men, though? I agree with you. I'm on your side. What if some women actually intentionally set up? It happens all the fucking time. That's why you can't trust anybody, baby. That's why stay in your lane and be a good person. Solid, period. Yeah. That's it. Be a good person. Don't over. Don't cross the fucking line as a man or a woman. Okay. Jasmine, I want you to look at these two guys sitting next to you. Out of these two right here, which one is the, <laughs> you think is the most, would be the most aggressive in the club? Boom. I'm just going to say that because I, I appreciate I know, that. I know Dex, like, he's never really advanced anything. He's just been like, kind of like, he cares more about his Ready like to be friends he cares but he cares more about his <laughs> business and about making a dollar and I think you care more about pussy period oh, 100% I had God. to choose one of the two it's yeah. fine and I, and I like your honesty I'm, I'm just I, being I straight up blame, my opinion my you. opinion might not be everybody else's opinion let's do an online poll right, right now that's what we'll do let's do an online poll Folks, am i right or in the com in the comments who do you think is more aggressive in the club this guy i don't really talk <laughs> to nobody in the club first of all all right yeah. that's my chest how about how about in life anyway listen i want to thank jasmine Walt. thank you so much for coming through thank give her a round of me. applause guys thank, thank you guys right. for having me this is so much fun all right also thank you to dj what out there DJ what? at dj what on instagram Damn, i gotta take a piss so bad man Same. hurry up i'm up. going first okay ladies Listen, first yeah hey, Damn. hey, hey you did me. Me. don't you don't read me as a play don't go in the same bathroom as when this a guy. girl a officially thing. was in the same page as oh, me to hook up you're fighting. All right. You're fighting. Well, we fighting. that was episode seven of Complete Animals. Find us youtube.com slash DJ Wonder. Find me at DJ Wonder and everywhere. you can find me at nowhere. And don't listen to Jasmine. I'm a gentleman. Lucky number seven. I hope that this podcast was amazing. It I was. aired it all out. Oh, well, well, Lord. I didn't tell it all that. Oh, Wait, we're not recording this still. Oh, oh, uh, hold up. Hold up. Yeah, listen, that, that's that the is, best part. That's been uh, Complete <laughs> Animals <laughs> oh, episode no, 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 seven. Oh, no. no, 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 no. They're not oh, supposed no. to know my MO, bro. It's not over yet. See, JD, you did a great job. <laughs> All right. No. Bye bye. No. See bye. ya.